the highest ministry of God. The highest ministry of God to man is the ministry of the word. God doesn't have anything higher. When you have come in contact with the word of God, you are experiencing the zenith of God's power. The preaching of the glorious gospel of Jesus, which is where we need to focus on, where we need to bury our heads in and say, yes, let the pestilence take place. I might not be able to stop pestilence, hallelujah. I might not be able to stop the earthquake because there are signs that must happen. If not, it means that Jesus didn't tell the truth. And I'm you know God doesn't just say anything. He magnifies his words more than his name. So shall it be the words that proceed out of his mouth. So God's not joking when he's talking. God's not talking and saying, I'm just saying. No, he said it when he meant it. He meant it when he said it. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah, glory to God. If you can hear me and I'm live in your, on your phone, I want you to uh, praise God with me and I want you to get excited about the next uh, few minutes and the, first, the next few hours where we're going to be sharing together, praise the Lord. And I want to say you are very much welcome to church today, praise the Lord. And we want to welcome everybody to church. We want to make sure everybody is um, uh, um, um, uh, connected. Please ensure that you share the stream with somebody. Uh, talk to somebody about it and let everybody know that church is on. And we want to welcome you once again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, today is our... Uh, communion service praise the Lord and we want to make sure that uh, we carry everybody along you know in in this um, experience praise the Lord so wherever you are try to get your um, your cup and um, uh, try to get the bread you know or a biscuit or uh, you know whatever things you can grab uh, and let's come together so that we can go into this communion experience together hallelujah you know uh god has given us a word for two thousand um, for the month of june and as it is uh, our tradition i would like everybody to uh listen up so that we can before we break bread uh, we want to know what god is saying for the month so we can consecrate ourselves praise the lord to what god has said and we can uh, uh, operate in faith and uh, operate in, uh, um, consciously in the light of that revelation praise the lord the reason why god gives us a word is not so it can be another religious um, feast or uh, religious tradition praise the lord but it's ultimately for us to be able to have uh, a conscious path uh, with which we could walk with god you know, uh, we know where God, what God is thinking, praise the Lord. You know, the Bible said we have the mind of Christ. And so we know what God is thinking. Right? The Bible says, you know, um, who knows the spirit, of, uh, who knows the mind of God, said the spirit of God. And so when, this, when the spirit of the Lord, he reveals to us what is in the, th the, the mind of God for us for the month, we, we, we are energized, hallelujah, we are energized in our spirit about what God is ready to do and we are able to lay hold on it praise the Lord and that's why these scriptures are important in the month of June you want to go back and read them you want to meditate on them you want to bring uh, come to a place where you can uh, 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 get all that God wants you to get praise the Lord you know the Bible says he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies he said my cup overflows praise the lord you know uh, god is uh, a preparer hallelujah of tables praise the lord and i want you to get excited about it because i know something big 
is is uh, is underneath the the word of faith that is preached. Uh, is underneath the counsel or the instruction, the instru divine instructions of God that is given to us. Hallelujah. Uh, as we began to pray, you know, uh, God has said these words, and I'm going to read some of these words to you verbatim, uh, and then I'm going to read out some scriptures to you. Praise the Lord. And here is the word of the Lord for, uh, for June in 2020. And these days of June shall be as the days of divine of a divine flow of what eyes haven't seen nor ears heard say unto Bethel that is Abba house say unto Bethel the dews shall come and they shall flow into this house and it shall be an experience of a flow of multiplied grace and peace saith the Lord behold rivers shall flow for a prophetic transfer and he said behold it flows to you that it may flow through you hallelujah he said it flows to you that it may flow through you it flows in you that through you the glory of god shall be seen rise in the place of fellowship lift up the gates and the rivers and let the rivers flow let the waters come into the dry lands for in your spirit is a fountain of healing and testimonies and you shall go in peace proclaiming the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me hallelujah in john chapter uh, 7 in verse 35 uh, i read from verse 37 through to 39 jesus said in the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried behold if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said hallelujah out of his belly out of his belly out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water but this is spake of the spirit which they, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Christ was not yet glorified. Praise the Lord. If you come with me to the gospel of uh, Luke in chapter 4 in verse 18. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. You know, in chapter uh, 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 John 7 in verse 39, he said he was referring to the spirit of God when he said this out of your belly shall flow the, 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 the rivers of living water. He said he was referring to the spirit he said because the spirit had not come. Hallelujah. But in Luke chapter 4, the spirit of the Lord had come. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, hallelujah, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to, and to he has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to uh, the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised, glory to God. And he says, there is, uh, God said, he said, there is a flow for the broken hearted, hallelujah. There is a flow for a deliverance from the captive from the captivities of of COVID-19. Praise the Lord. There's a flow of restoration and recovery, saith the Lord. This flow shall set at liberty them that are bruised, hallelujah, by the pandemic or any tragedy. Hallelujah. He said, see the withered leaves come alive. Glory to God. He said, the dying trees regain strength by the flow of divine refreshing by the anointing. This flow shall wipe away every seed sown by the pandemic, every situation caused by the pandemic, every limitation caused by the pandemic, every circumstances that is that is not of God that was orchestrated or architectured by the the the, the pandemic and the, and the, and the demonic operations, you know, uh, during these times. Hallelujah! He said, "Behold, these are the days of a welling up." Hallelujah unto eternal life in you and through you hallelujah and god you know graciously declare the month of of june uh, a month of a welling up of the eternal hallelujah 
the, the, this month the lord is saying that there's going to be such a springing forth hallelujah and outflowing out, and outflowing uh, and uh, and outworking hallelujah of the spirit hallelujah at working you and um ultimately we are going to get to a point where uh, I, I, God would have every one of us be more conscious of these words. If you will look at the book of uh, um, Jeremiah, you know, the Bible says in chapter 2 in verse 13, it says, For my people have committed two evils, that they, uh, they have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewn them out cisterns, broken cisterns that, can, that cannot hold water, Hallelujah. See, God is saying here that, uh, you know, a lot of people are, are so desperate around the world right now concerning uh, their lives. And, you know, COVID-19 has affected them, you know, uh, uh, economically, it's affected them in other ways. And so they are looking for natural wells to satisfy themselves. They're looking for all the uh, alternative means apart from the word of God to, to, to solve the problems around them. And God said, you know, there's an evil, praise the Lord. You know, the child of God is committing an evil when he looks away from the word of God and the counsel of God as his ultimate uh, uh, instruction in the days of dirt, in the days of scarcity, in the days of, of pandemic, hallelujah. It's evil because there is no uh, wisdom of God at work in it. He said, he said they forsook, and I love the way Amplified puts it, you know, he said they went and they built for themselves a system that is merely a sieve you know it's it's like pouring water in a basket and he said don't go for that you know god is our fountain glory to god god is our fountain of hope is our fountain is a spring hallelujah of a new work a new job a new testimony a new all things are become new praise the lord because of the anointing at work in your life hallelujah and i want to encourage you uh, with these two things praise the lord number one you know you got to understand the bible says out of your belly shall flow the rivers of the living water hallelujah it didn't say out of your bible it didn't say out of your pastor it didn't say out of your pastor's sermons it didn't say um, uh, um out of a cell meeting he didn't say uh he didn't say none of those things he says how out of your spirit in other words uh your human spirit hallelujah is 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 uh is is the is the avenue praise the lord that releases the anointing hallelujah into your situation praise the lord the holy ghost releases the anointing into you and you release the anointing into your situation praise the lord you see that that's the way it works and he says so your spirit is the one that releases the anointing praise the lord say me say say with me say my spirit is is is, is heaven's uh, 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 living water corporation hallelujah and out of that spirit of god out of, out of your spirit your human spirit hallelujah and that's why it's important that in june I, I want you to pay a close attention to your human spirit hallelujah I want you to pay a close attention to your human spirit, not just to what you do in church and, 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 and order you know, your job. A lot of times we are so conscious of it. We're so conscious of what we do at work, uh, and every other thing, you know, family. We measure a lot of things when it comes to other things apart from the word of God. I want you to watch out, be sensitive to your human spirit in the month of June. You know, there's going to be a flow. There's going to be a release of the anointing. Hallelujah. You know, he said, out of your his belly shall flow rivers. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, yesterday I kept, I kept praying a prayer that, you know, the rivers, there are rivers in the heavenly places. There are many rivers in, the, uh, in, in Eden. The Bible said there were a river that, that, that eventually spread and uh, had four heads. Hallelujah. And they all uh, flew, uh, flew from eden into different nations hallelujah is the same way with you child of god that in the realm of the spirit there are rivers hallelujah there are healing rivers hallelujah some healings are just uh, uh, for uh, um, economic uh, uh, um, prowess or prosperity some healings are for ministry some healings are going to come that is not just going to be about ministry it's going to ultimately be about what god is saying and uh, and how god wants to bring you out of where you are and to where you want to be counsel of the spirit will come to you as a result 
and so it is key that you understand this truth that the these things are these rivers are flowing out of your belly praise the lord say with me the rivers are flowing out of my belly hallelujah there are many rivers in the in the realm of the spirit but they are all coming together through a tunnel glory to god they are coming together through a tunnel and they are flowing through you praise the lord hallelujah he said the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me the second thing i want to tell you is that um uh uh, uh the anointing is deposited in your spirit that it may flow through you praise the lord learn how to allow the anointing flow through you praise the lord learn how to yield yourself to the anointing listen what you didn't yield yourself to cannot flow through you what you didn't yield yourself to cannot flow through you praise the lord you were created to be a channel a tunnel hallelujah a bridge hallelujah <clears throat> A divine bridge through which God could transfer his grace hallelujah you are Christ ambassadors hallelujah you are where you are wherever you are the Bible says God calls it a holy land a holy place hallelujah and so it's very key that you understand this and that you know the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and he has anointed you and out of your spirit praise the Lord out of your spirit there is a release hallelujah you know and that's why I want you to go ahead this morning and release that anointing praise the Lord release that anointing is not in heaven so hallelujah that anointing is not even in the Bible glory to God that anointing is not even in the Bible It's not in the word hallelujah hallelujah the Bible said the word is nigh thee praise the Lord the word is nigh thee is in thy mouth glory to God you see the mouth is key you know to what God is about to do in the next level and the reason for that is that your mouth is the 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 um, the the activator praise the lord of what has already been been revealed praise the lord and as i say you will say to he has said that we may also say he has said that we may boldly say it's important what we say because our words actually carries the anointing that is being released hallelujah our words become the flow the ripple that wave hallelujah of waters that carries the anointing praise the lord into whatever situation learn how to speak god's word in june learn how to release god's word on your job stop stop talking about what the what the pandemic has done to you uh, stop analyzing it stop uh, hanging around those that want to analyze the negativities of covid 19 hallelujah hold on to the word of god you know, let that be a well in a praise the lord jesus said I, 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 out of out of you shall flow the, the river hallelujah there's going to be a springing up a springing up in john chapter 4 verse uh, 10 uh, uh, I'm going to jump straight to verse 14. You know, uh, uh, Jesus was talking to the, uh, the Samaritan woman at the well. He said, but what, he said, whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Hallelujah. I would never say thirst. Thirst is not a good thing. Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes it is used as a good thing. But it's not in all cases that thirst is a good thing. Hallelujah. God doesn't want us to be thirsty about anything. To be thirsty is to be in need of something. It's to, it's to be desperate, desperately in, in need of something. Uh, and the reason why you even got to the realm of thirst is because you didn't have access to water. You didn't have access to a flow. You know, and God, God is saying, He said, Whosoever drink out of the water that I shall give unto him shall never never thirst hallelujah I said and the water that I give him shall be in him a well glory someone say a well a well of water springing praise the Lord another word here is welling up glory to God unto eternal life hallelujah I love the woman she said sir you know uh, give me that water hallelujah I, I don't want to thirst hallelujah I don't want to thirst I want to I want to get a water that is beyond the natural water I want to get a water a flow that is be, be, uh, uh, is beyond the natural 
natural means and the natural uh, realities of things. Glory to God. I, I want to get that. I want to be able to get that supernatural access to a realm where I am never thirsty glory to God the Lord is removing your desperations and your thirst and those things that have brought thirst into you those areas that you've been looking for something and it looks like it's hard to get and you have become thirsty the Lord saying no more shall you be a weary uh, land hallelujah for there shall be an outpouring glory to God of heaven's water upon you glory to God but you see the the last thing I got to say here is this water you know is uh, already on the inside of you but you have to draw it out hallelujah it said out of you it shall be a well of water it didn't say it shall be water it shall be a well of water you see when it's a well of water that tells you something that it has to be drawn out praise the lord and that's why it says springing or welling up glory to god the word welling up means to 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 uh, uh to draw upward and outward to draw upward and outward onto an overflow that's what a welling up is there's going to be uh, 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 you uh, taking from within glory to god drawing from the spirit drawing from the core drawing from the deep glory to god and that it's going to be an uh, an up, up, uh, uprising or uh, there's also not just an uprising but a breaking forth hallelujah so it's, you're going to draw up and you're going to expand onto overflow hallelujah if you have your cup and you have your your, your bread with you praise the lord we're, we're just gonna go into this because it's very important that as a church we do not take this with a religious mindset you know paul said something he said you have put, many of you have partaken on the uh, 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 with, with the with the communion and you have become sick in your body a lot of people assume that oh communion can get you sick no paul is saying you have taken this thing without the revelation behind it and that's why many of you are still sick that's why many of you are still jobless that's why many of you are still uh, uh, in lack that's why some of you are still desperate to be healed that's why somebody, the, the Lord is healing somebody's left eye. I don't know, something happened to you. You know, and the Lord said, I'm healing that left eye right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is healing that left eye right now in the name of Jesus. The, the vision is clearer. The vision is clearer in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's a sensation in that eye right now. And, and you, you, you feel like, you know, uh, 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 scratching it. You know, that, that's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He's healing you right now. Hallelujah. Yes, I see the anointing flowing through your the veins around your eyes. Hallelujah. Uh, I see the blood of Jesus pumped. Hallelujah. Active, you know, running through your veins. And it's bringing healing to you. Glory to God. And as many of you out there who, who have one heal, one disease or one symptom or the other, and you, you have a body of symptom, I, I, want, I want you to be conscious is this truth that when we take when we partake of this we're not just partaking of a religion well this is not a religious thing praise the lord this is this is the peak hallelujah of the ministry of jesus on earth hallelujah he he, he gathered them together he said i'm not just going to die he said this is something you've got to do in remembrance of me hallelujah and the bible said in the same night hallelujah in the same night night depicts a time of of uh, of um trepidations and a night of uh, it's, it's a night depicts a time of uh, evil and jesus and of course he, uh, the greatest evil <clears throat> And darkness was about to take place you know and the Bible said but in that same night he took the bread hallelujah and he broke it hallelujah and he said this is my body broken for you hallelujah and then he took the cup and said this is a cup hallelujah of what of the new covenant praise the lord this is a cup of a new testimony glory to god not an upgraded testimony not a a, a, a refurbished uh, old covenant is that this is new hallelujah this is something new this is something that had never been seen never heard before never tasted of before you know he said my body 
is broken for you hallelujah and that's why paul said if you take this with this revelation in your spirit he said you will not only uh, experience the, the the glory of god he said that this this communion is able to penetrate and make active the finished work of healing in your body so none of you so paul expects everybody that partakes of the communion to never to go back on the same person he expects them to be healed as they drink hallelujah and as they eat the bread have the body of jesus hallelujah you know paul expects everybody to be healed god is paul expects testimonies to abound as they go home glory to god he expects testimony to abound in their lives and my expectation is none less hallelujah than what paul you know expects of the church and expects of those who partake of this in faith and in that same spirit i want you to pick that cup hallelujah and we're going to pray and we're going to partake of this anointing hallelujah thank you lord jesus oh father we give you praise oh come on to, let's come together let's pray father we wanna we wanna uh, 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 say thank you for who you are for who you will always be we want to say thank you lord we want to uh, thank you for what was wrought in on calvary's cross your body broken for us your body broken for us and lord we stand in faith oh god even for this month of june oh lord that as we partake of this we're not only reminded oh god that the blood and your body oh god is at work the power of communion is at work oh lord we come into agreement oh lord with the blood of jesus that speaks better things than the blood of abel and lord we decree in the name of jesus healings to take place lord you have said the month is a month of a welling up hallelujah and therefore we decree a welling up oh god of of the miraculous a welling up old oh God of the super super supernatural supernatural testimonies oh God in the name of Jesus Lord I, 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 I see a lot of weaknesses a lot of people that are running and, and, and they are breathless in my spirit and Lord I pray even as we partake of this experience oh God that energy of the Holy Ghost strength and might oh God shall be released from above oh God and we decree and we shout it that we we have unction for the for, from the holy one above we have the anointing we have the grace oh god we we are not sick in our body we are not we are not weak in our body we are not weak in our marriages in our in our in our ministries in our, in our children we decree they are covered hallelujah by the blood father we give you praise thank you lord for all our endeavors in the month of june thank you lord jesus that there is a springing up a welling up unto eternal life lord be praised in jesus name we are prayed the church said amen come on go ahead and partake of this gracious gracious experience come on go ahead and thank god praise his name thank him hallelujah speak in tongues if you can say so there is a welling up on the inside of me there's an upward outward welling up springing up unto overflow in me Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm a channel of the living water. God be praised. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Lord, we love you today. And we thank you. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the month of June? Glory to God. Again, I want to welcome you to um, virtual intercontinental service. Today promises to be another gracious, wonderful experience in the word of God. Hallelujah. And before we go too far, I want us to pray once again and just uh, uh, believe God for utterance. Hallelujah. Pray with me and say that there will be utterance. Hallelujah. To teach, to preach, to be a doer. Hallelujah. Of the word, not just hearers alone. Come and pray with me. See, as the word of God comes to me, he comes uh, to change me. I, I receive the change anointing that is wrapped in the word of God. I, I receive the healing anointing that is wrapped in the word that I'm about to hear. I, 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 I receive the transfiguration experience that is wrapped in the word that I'm about to hear in the name of Jesus. Oh, say my faith is strong and ready hallelujah in the name of jesus so i i receive all that you have already prepared for me you know in the word in the name of jesus oh father we love you today thank you lord for utterance thank you lord for utterance thank you lord for an outflow an outflow and outworking an outworking of your power thank you lord jesus for the anointing to teach and preach. Thank you, Lord, for this shall become an atmosphere of edification. The atmosphere of the miraculous. Thank you, Lord, for you'll open our eyes, O oh God. You'll anoint our eyes with our, with, with the salves of the anointing. And we shall see things, hallelujah, that you want us to see. And we shall be an empowered people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look at two people around you, you know, welcome them on Facebook. Let them know you are welcome to the month of June, the month of the welling up, the springing up. Hallelujah. The welling up, the springing up. Hallelujah. Unto eternal life. Hallelujah. Learn how to stay in prayer, in, in the practice of God's presence uh, long enough. Hallelujah. To to see what God has uh, 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 prepared for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you ready for the word? Okay. Um, today we're going to continue in our uh, series, you know, and uh, we're, I'm going to continue the, the, the thoughts, in the thoughts that I've been sharing with you since Sunday last week, talking about the uh, endemic uh, um, dimensions. Uh, it, it's still the series, uh, God of Dimensions, but I'm still going to be talking about Adamic Dimensions this week. Uh, and, and the reason for that is that, uh, you know, there are certain things that needs to be established before we go too far. And you need to understand them, praise the Lord. You know, uh, sometimes the, the, the burden of, of, of uh, preaching the word, you know, uh, is, is, is um, such that God... Uh, keeps taking you back to the same thing, you know, to teach God's people because he, he wants them to get something right there. It is, it's very uh, key. Uh, it's very possible for you to quickly get something and run with it and not understand it, but you just run with it anyway. Praise the Lord. God doesn't want us to do that. Hallelujah. And with that, I want to welcome you uh, to church once again. And I want you to turn with me to Ephesians in chapter 3 you already know uh, we're gonna have a, a faith in concert hallelujah you know um, uh, uh, where we're going to be reading a couple of scriptures together hallelujah and um, it's key that you you know this and uh, please even if you're in your house or wherever 
pick your Bibles. And for those of you who wants to share it on the stream, please do. Hallelujah. Ephesians in chapter 3, uh, uh, we're going to read uh, uh, from verse 3. Praise the Lord. Uh, as we did last week, Ephesians chapter 3. All right, Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, Paul writes to the Ephesians in chapter 3. He says, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, hallelujah, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, my knowledge in the secret, the mystery of the anointing, hallelujah, the secret of the anointing. Do you know there are secrets to the anointing, hallelujah. There are secrets to the anointing. He said, he, said, he said that ye may understand. And God is not hiding this secret from us. He wants us to understand the secrets therein. Verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who I am less the least of all saints is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unre unsearchable riches of Christ. Hallelujah unsearchable unsearchable here does not mean uh, you can find it hallelujah it just means it's bottomless hallelujah you keep searching and searching and searching and searching because when you find this you realize there's another and there's another why because he's a god of dimensions hallelujah <clears throat> verse 9 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from uh, which from the beginning of the word has been hid in God, who created all things by Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 15. Of whom the whole family. Uh, uh, sorry, I skipped something. Verse 10. Let's let's do verse 10 together. Is that to the intent that now, uh, uh, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places it might be known to the church. Hallelujah. Uh, by the the by the church the manifold wisdom of god the word manifold here actually talks about the spiritual intelligentsia and dimensions in god hallelujah the word manifold here uh, talks about the dimensions of wisdom in god dimensions of uh, 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 um, um, counsel in god hallelujah and that's what we're going to be talking about you know and then in verse 15 is it of whom the whole family of earth of in, the, in heaven and earth is named verse 17 through to 21 let's read ready go that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth the length the depth and the height and to know the love of god the love of christ which passes knowledge that she may be might be filled with all the fullness of god now unto him is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask think and according to the power that walketh in us unto him the glory to the church by christ throughout all ages without without world without end amen chapter 4 in verse 4 there is one body one spirit as ye are called in one hope of your calling one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all hallelujah but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of christ verse 10 that he uh, he that ascended in the same also descended also ascended uh, up far above all heavens that he might fill all things after he gave uh, and he gave some apostle prophet and evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saying the work of ministry and the edifying of the body of christ till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ now the last one is going to be um in first corinthians hallelujah uh um second corinthians rather chapter three and we're going to read just uh, two verses. Hallelujah. Verse seven, verses 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the Spirit. 
is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, hallelujah, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please could you hear me uh, get a pen or something? Thank you. Um, it's very key for us to understand that we're going to take it. We're going to take it from where we started last week. I mean, where we ended last week. Praise the Lord. Last week we we said a lot of things. Glory to God by the anointing. Uh, I am convinced that you know you heard something and and you you it was uh, staring uh, for something that is new. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And and I want you to get that that in in your spirit. Hallelujah. That uh, we're going somewhere. This is not the end. This is not, uh, we're just starting. Hallelujah. Now, um, there, is, um, uh, there is a prophetic uh, transition. Hallelujah. At hand. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. There is a, there is a prophetic transition at hand. And um, it is key. Can I, can I have a, a paper or something? Thank you. You know, there, there is a prophetic uh, um, um, uh there's a prophetic um, agenda of God at hand. Hallelujah. Uh, and it's key that we understand what God is saying and how we need to respond as a church. Praise the Lord. My prayer this morning is that the communion of the, the congregation of the saints as we have come together would translate into a supernatural, um, supernatural um practicality praise the lord and we will get to the point where we understand that this is the will of god for us and we need to run by faith you know and uh, you know in john three sixteen, if you will go there for a moment you know um the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 it's, it's important that uh, there has been an error to the interpretation of that scripture. And sadly, that's been the, the substratum uh or the defining uh, reality of what many have called Christianity today. You know, um, the Bible says, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, then whosoever believe him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And what we have done is we have allowed theology to be contrasted or to be uh, theology to, to define what salvation is to us. In that you know our salvation is now uh, about perishing or about you know uh, going not going to hell you know as opposed to embracing all of the dimensions hallelujah that God has wrapped in the, uh, the our experience uh, of salvation praise the Lord and here's what I'm saying church that the everlasting life of God, the divine life of God, the very life as God has it in himself that has been imputed into you at salvation is not, uh, is not, uh, is not all about you uh, being saved and, and making heaven or uh, uh, you know, getting to the gates of heaven. Y your salvation is bigger than access to heaven. Uh, your salvation is bigger than a, a, a ticket at the gate of heaven just to get to heaven and, and just to be with God uh, in, in, you know, forever. Praise the Lord. Uh, what we're saying is that there is a dimension, praise the Lord, that is wrapped in the, the, the life that has been given unto you. Glory to God. 
there is a dimension in what God has given to you. Hallelujah. So whatsoever is born of God, you know, the Bible says, you know, if you believe you will not perish. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 1.18, we read last week that to, to them that reject the gospel, you know, they are, they are going to perish if you reject the gospel. But Paul said that the gospel to us is power and it's the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. And Ephesians in chapter 3 tells us about this manifold wisdom of God. You know, in other words, this wisdom of God is in dimensions. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Run with me to John in chapter 10. If you will, in chapter 10, I'll read uh, just uh, uh, verse 10. Hallelujah. Jesus said, the thief cometh but to steal. Hallelujah. The thief cometh but to steal. Hallelujah. And to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly the word more abundantly here if you are if you're reading king james is underlined and that's to let you understand that there's still a, a lot of work being done you know on that word praise the lord i love the translation that says to have it to the full and this is really what the scripture actually says where we read in ephesians the fullness of god hallelujah the fullness of the stature of the anointing so he said i am come that you might have the life of god the same life that john 3 16 you know uh, proclaims and 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 now that we are saved hallelujah but if you notice jesus didn't emphasize the place of destruction here rather he talks about that life given to you you know how that you can have it to the full glory to god you know so to the unbelievers hallelujah we preach the word of god that they might not be destroyed hallelujah that they might avoid hell but once you give your heart to jesus and you are born again child of god you see the the gospel becomes the wisdom of god that needs to be unraveled hallelujah it needs to be searched hallelujah and in, you need to walk in its dimensions hallelujah and so there are dimensions in god there are dimensions wrapped hallelujah the lord had dimensions on his mind when he sent jesus praise the lord so this is not just about being a christian and i get to heaven there are dimensions and dimensions in god hallelujah like david glory to god could there be more to you than just you know taking care of your father's sheep glory to god when Daniel, when Samuel came on that fateful day, he said, I'm not going to sit down until David gets here. And when he got here, the Bible says he poured the oil on him, meaning the anointing. He poured on him, hallelujah. And the Bible says he anointed him as kings, praise the Lord. And you see, it's funny how after our being anointed as kings, you know, we still go about our daily lives like normal. Glory to God. You know, yeah, I've been anointed, so what? You know, and now he was doing what he had to do. But you see, David was conscious of the dimensions wrapped, hallelujah, in that anointing. You see, that anointing that was poured upon David was not ultimately not just to bring, I mean, it's not was not just to bring him into the throne of David, glory to God. It was also for him to conquer the 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 the, the Goliath of Gath. He was supposed to also prepare him and clear the path to the greater place that God was taking him to, glory to God. And, you know, like David, we must understand that the anointing of salvation, the, the life, the divine life of God that has been given unto us, is it, it, God has dimensions on his mind when he gave us that life. Praise the Lord. It's not just a life that we go to church and come back, you know, say amen and say bless and say all those Christian language and do those things that we say every Sunday and amen, God bless you, brother. And, and we think that's it. No, that's not it. Praise the Lord. God's ultimate goal was not to get us to heaven. Hallelujah. No, no, that's not his ultimate goal. You see, if that was his ultimate goal, when we got saved, boom, we should have left and just be with him. Praise the Lord. But no, he, he, he left us here. Glory to God. And he left us here for a reason. Hallelujah. He, he, he left us here, hear this, for the unfolding of the manifold wisdom of God that is wrapped in the divine life that is on the inside of you. Whew, hallelujah. 
You were left here after you confessed Jesus, hallelujah, as your Lord and Savior for the unfolding, for the unveiling, praise the Lord, for the revealing, hallelujah, of the wisdom from above, for the revealing, for the manifestation of the unction and dimensions from above, hallelujah. And like David, we can't just go into that place, you know, with bread and cheese and not discern that there's more to us. Hallelujah. And you know, when he got there, the Bible says, Shama, his brother, looked at him and said, what are you doing here? You always just love to put your nose where it doesn't belong. What on earth are you doing here, Dave? And David looked at him and said, no, brother, is there not a cause? Is there not a a reason you see the, the the divine life that is wrapped on the inside of you is an enough reason for you to invade to 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 shine on earth hallelujah are you catching what i'm saying here the divine life of god in you is enough glory to god for you to be the the best christian if you were the only christian in the world there will be such a move of god in the world hallelujah are you catching what i'm saying here shama looked at him and said what are you doing here brother what you don't belong here you don't have what it takes to be in this camp we are military folks we we've had all the trainings that you could ever imagine and when we talk about Goliath, let's deal with him, you know, based on our own terms. You can't know, you don't know anything about this. Hallelujah. But I love David. He didn't give up on himself. Hallelujah. He said, is there not a cause? Glory to God. You know, David reminded himself of what God <clears throat> had done. And he recited this before the king. He said, your servant killed a bear. Hallelujah. With his bare hands. You know, that, that almost sounded like a lie. I imagine Saul looked at him and said, are you, are you serious? You're just 13 years old. You don't, you, you don't know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. But there was such an audacity in his voice that would cause the king of Israel to consider what he was saying. You see, David understood that there were dimensions to what God had called him to do. The anointing of God poured upon him was not just to bring him on the throne. There were things that it will achieve, glory to God. And like Shama, you know, the, the, some of us, are, uh, we have a Shama approach, glory to God, to the anointing, this life of God on the inside of, on the inside of us. We have a Shama approach. What do I mean by that? This approach that commonizes the anointing, this approach that is not willing to explore the dimension. Shama was there when David was anointed. Shama was there when David, when, when the, the, the man, the, the prophet stood and said, I'm not going to sit down until David gets here. He was there. He witnessed the, the secret uh, coronation of the next king of Israel. How dare you talk to him that way? How dare you casualize him as though you don't know dimensions about him? You made it look like he was just a younger brother. No, he was your younger brother that had been anointed, hallelujah, as king before now. Praise the Lord. And that's why, you know, some of us have this Shama approach to the life of of God on the inside of us we we think it's just oh yeah I'm born again yes I, I speak in tongues yeah I go to church yeah I'm a child of God and uh, yeah well it's all about going to heaven no it's not all about going to heaven there are things that God has left you here to do glory to God before getting to heaven hallelujah there are dimensions that are wrapped in your anointing that you have not come into there are some of you that are you I see you coming out Ali like you know when you go to uh to the mall and you or to a store and you buy a you buy some clothes and you want to try them on hallelujah and and you go into that small room where they call changing room uh, that there, there is a divine changing room taking that is here right now as you listen to me praise the lord and the lord said go into that room and change glory to god go into that room and change because 
change is needed hallelujah i don't want you see the lord is not going to win the world you know with this with this with this realm that you are functioning on this way of your walk walk with god god is saying i need you to move to the next dimension hallelujah there is a higher ground hallelujah there is a prophetic ascendancy hallelujah god is calling us into a perpetual entry into a new realm hallelujah in him glory to god you got to ascend in your prayer life you got to ascend in your word life your word your ministry life you got to ascend in all that concerns you god said go into that room hallelujah and change glory to god go into that room and change and change your mentality about yourself Go into that room and change the things that I've already uh, de uh, designed for you to come into. The things that I've, the places, the realms that I've already designed for you to function in. Hallelujah. Shama looked at his brother despite the fact that he knew that he had been anointed as king. He said, what are you doing here, David? He spoke to him just like any other person. But David reminded Shama. He said, is there no dimensions to the things that God had called me to do? David was saying, could there be a wisdom of God wrapped in this anointing of God upon my life that it's more than just getting to the throne of David, but just before I get there and after I get there, there are dimensions that this anointing upon my life could operate in. There are dimensions in God. Could it be, could it be that Samuel didn't just anoint me for some chair to sit down. Maybe he also anointed me, glory to God, to be a champion for God. To be the one that shows you all what God, what God can do. And as I heard when he, when he looked at the Goliath of Gath and he said, I'm going to give your head. No, you are not going to give my head to the, to, to, to the fowls, uh, the vultures. I'm going to give your head to the birds of the air i'm gonna put and as at this time that he was talking he had nothing on him he had nothing later he was able to pick some stones hallelujah uh, he didn't have a knife he didn't have a sword on him but how could you you don't have no sword and you say you're gonna cut somebody's head how could you say that david understood that there were dimensions hallelujah that's that was wrapped in that anointing glory to god the life that God has given to you is more than the life of being the best husband in the world and be the best engineer in the world. It's more than that. Hallelujah. You see, you have explored those dimensions, but there is a higher, a deeper, deeper, deeper dimension as to the things that God has called you to do in him. Praise the Lord. And in this series, you know, I believe that the Lord is going to open your eyes. Hallelujah. That our convocation in the world, in the word would be, would translate into divine, a, 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 a experience that will cause you to move out of where you are praise the Lord to the next level hallelujah oh the Lord is calling his church to a higher mountain and the Lord is calling his army to the mountains hallelujah he's saying leave the realm that you are come closer hallelujah and let there be a new you glory to God hallelujah but there was something more about David, as you will notice, about the sons of Issachar. Though they were not there, though they didn't see Samuel as he poured oil on him, hallelujah, but they knew, praise the Lord, they understood the times, hallelujah, and they did not only, not only understood it, they knew the anointing of God was upon David, and they understood it had to, it was in dimensions, and they kept showing up in different places at different times, reminding David, it's time for you to be anointed again. It's you see, they kept anointing him the first time, the second time, and the third time, <clears throat> not because he needed to be anointed more and more, but because these people understood that there were dimensions to him. They said, no, we got to move away just from Judah. You got to go to the realm and dimension of Israel. <laughs> Glory to God. The day Saul died, they were looking for David. This, where is the next level? Where is that man that God has put the next level in him? Where is that man that he anointed and the next dimension of 
of God is wrapped on the inside of him. And they caught David and they say, oh, there you are. Come up. You got to be anointed. Uh, Paul said, David said, you got to hold on. You gotta go, Come on, brother. Says, chill. I'm going to do it, but uh, just chill. You see, they understood that there were dimensions to the anointing of God that was upon the life of David. And that was unlike Shama. Hallelujah. You know, I would have loved to say, oh, there are people around you that could be a Shama. I would have loved to tell you there could be people around you that would be sons of Issachar. But I want you to understand something here. That let's assume that it's not about Shama being on the outside. Sometimes Shama is your own approach to your anointing. Sometimes the sons of Issachar is the anointing of the sons of Issachar is your own approach to your anointing. Hallelujah. When you operate in the sons of Issachar anointing, it means that you are coming to a point where you begin to discern that the law would have me move on from here. Or the law would have me begin to pray in certain ways. The law would have me to begin to minister in certain manner. The law would have me operate in my gift in certain manner. I feel like coveting this and that. That's kind of gift now. I don't know why, but I know I got to do it. Hallelujah. You see, you are discerning the times and you're discerning the next level. And you, you also could be a shama to your own anointing. You could be, you could have a shama anointing or approach to your anointing, you know, by telling yourself, what, what am I even doing here? And like, I don't think I could, I don't think my anointing is needed in this generation. I don't think uh, this church really needs what I want. You know, I don't, I don't think, uh, I think they can do well without me in the choir. I think they can do well without me. You know, I don't think I could go to nations to be a pastor. I don't think so. Uh, I think I'm, I don't, I don't know much. I don't know how to do it. Hallelujah. You could do that as well. And that is you limiting the only one on the inside of you. Hallelujah. You know, the, the journey of the Israelite, you know, as they come out, as they came out of, of, of slavery, you would have thought that God was going to take a while, you know, before he could bring them into the promise and, you know, to bring them into royalty. Hallelujah. But God God's intention was to bring him out of slavery to the realm of a people of promise, out of, you know, dirts, out of, you know, uh, 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 scarcity and bring them into, uh, you know, of surplus. Praise the Lord. Have you noticed the Bible says the spirit of craftsmanship came upon certain people, you know, and, you know, where the tabernacle was concerned. And you wonder how can craftsmanship spirit come upon people who were craftsmen all their lives hallelujah that tells you that there were dimensions hallelujah even to the creativity of god the gift of god upon your life are you catching what i'm saying here you know the, the spirit of craftsmanship came upon some some folks why why do you have to it's like saying the spirit of a carpenter came upon the carpenter or saying the spirit of um, a bricklayer came upon a bricklayer. All right, these are slaves. These are people that were good. They built the whole of the skyscrapers of Egypt. They know about building. They know about tabernacles. They might not know much about church and you, but they know about building. <clears throat> Just give them the dimensions. They know how to do it. And when God gave Moses the department of the, the tabernacle, the spirit of craftsmanship came upon certain people. Hallelujah. And they began to, to operate in that anointing to build. Why do you need that anointing? It's because even the gift that you think you know or you're operating in, God wants to take you to the next level of it. Praise the Lord. And everything we talked about last week was for you to understand what God has wrapped in the second Adam for you. Hallelujah. What God has wrapped in the second Adam for you, what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God told me this morning, he said, there shall be a greater expression of the finished work, the merits of the finished work. There shall be a greater expression of the merits of the finished work. This is the generation that would express the glory, the generation of greater works. Hallelujah. This is the generation, church. I don't care how 
a lot of things lies to you and tells you otherwise. And it looks like, oh, where are we in church? Well, what's going on? It looks like we are losing or we are missing something. We've not been able to come together globally. We've not been able to come physically together globally. And it's been a lot. We've been limited in many ways. We could, but I tell you the truth, Alina. These are the days of the greater works. God is bringing his army together to to, to, to manifest the end time greater works. Hallelujah. And that's why I want you to get excited about you about it. Hallelujah. And so the spirit of craftsmanship will come upon you despite the fact that you've been a craftsman all your life. The gifts will come on you that because there are dimensions to the things God wants to do through you. Hallelujah. Now, uh, I want us to go deeper into certain scriptures so that we can understand some things. Go with me to uh, Luke in chapter. Uh, um, now, before you go to Luke, I want us to explore certain things that we talked about last week. So that for those of you who weren't here last week will kind of understand, you know, uh, some things. We, we established certain things on, on last week about the first Adam. Uh, we explored the first Adam uh, and uh, his life and um, as compared to Jesus, how that Jesus operated in the authority, you know, of the first Adam and that Adam, the first man, would have been able to do uh, what Jesus did, you know, and all because, you know, Jesus is the second Adam, praise the Lord. But uh, what is important, uh, however, is that we need to understand that G the Bible did not only call uh, Jesus the, 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 the second Adam, but he is also called the last Adam. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, the life of God upon you is a, is a deposit of divine expressions and divine dimensions. Hallelujah. And, and we saw that Jesus, you know, uh, has been, has been, uh, uh, as as uh, 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 has been made uh, uh, the the Bible calls him the 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 firstborn Hallelujah uh, 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 the firstborn and the reason for that is we are not conformed to the image of the first Adam we are conformed to the image of the firstborn Hallelujah and the firstborn is not the is, is not the the child of Mary hallelujah the firstborn here is the child of God remember when Jesus was about to die he said to Mary and John he said look at your son son look at your mother in other words let you know the, I am not uh, yes my humanity is important but it's uh, and we saw that Matthew kind of gave us what that really is you know, and tells us about the genealogy of Jesus, the 14 generations from Abraham to, 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 to uh, the, the 14 generations apart. And he, he tried to prove the humanity of Jesus. And that's awesome. But at Calvary, he was saying to them, my humanity is coming to an end. Hallelujah. No longer would I be called the son of Mary or the son of Joseph. Hallelujah. Or the son of man. Hallelujah. There was a new birth that was taking place. And we're going to explore all that today. You know, a new birth was taking place. But notice, the Bible said we've been made to be uh, conformed to the image of the firstborn. Not the, the image of the first Adam, but the firstborn, you know. And the firstborn, it, it, the, the word born here in Romans 8 has got nothing to do with Bethlehem. The birth we're talking about, Romans is talking about, is the birth that took place at the tomb. Hallelujah. And that was where you see the glory of of the second Adam, the glory of the uh, last Adam, praise the Lord. And that is the glory we have been called to behold in 2 Corinthians 3. And that's the glory we see. And that's the glory we are conformed to. And that's the glory we walk in. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the Christianity, like we have said, is not a ministration of uh, some theological uh, prowess and, and commentaries and, and uh, know-hows. Hallelujah. You know, the, 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 the salvation of the believer carries so much uh, divine dimensions that, you know, uh, um, um, uh, uh, theology is quite whimsical to 
express its bottomlessness you can you can't study this thing out you can you can you know make a theology out of this this is a divine reality hallelujah that no words and no uh, 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 theology could capture hallelujah and like we have said many have lived their life based on the definition of christianity as established by theology not by the word of god hallelujah but when you look at the word of god you will notice the the life god has given to you was designed to actually be a life in you to the full a life in you to be more abundantly it's it's it's, it's not it doesn't emphasize the place of being destroyed or getting to heaven or <coughs> your salvation being your what your your ticket to, to, at the gate of heaven yes we're gonna get heaven and without without giving our heart to Jesus we would never get to heaven but the moment you give your life to Christ that all that changes praise the Lord you become an ambassador you become uh, 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 an army praise the Lord you become an instrument in a hand of the Lord to do great and wonderful things in the earth hallelujah do, do you understand that and so uh, we have to understand Understand that you, you look at the parable of the unfaithful servant, how they were given a uh, 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 talent, and the, the master travels, and then when he comes back. <clears throat> He's wondering what happened to this man that I gave one talent. The Bible said he went and buried it. Praise the Lord! And this is exactly you know the way a lot of people have have uh, uh, le- uh, the, you know uh, have um, uh, approached the the life of God or the salvation, the eternal life that's wrapped on the inside of them. You know they they accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and um, they they are okay. They want to get to heaven. You know sometimes you even hear them. Uh, sadly you know pray the prayer of Lord I want to get to heaven and all of that you see you see you you begin to see they still do not understand the concept of salvation they think it's all about getting to heaven and even with that they wonder yeah is it is it good enough for me uh, to, to get to heaven just by confessing Jesus is my Lord and Savior what about all the things hallelujah and so theology has become um, <clears throat> the 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 defining go- body hallelujah uh, the defining government you know on earth you know that we have allowed them to define what uh, 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 salvation is and all but when you when you begin to look in the word of god you begin to see that there is more to the life that god has given to you than you just get into heaven praise the lord and I want you to get ready because God will begin to show you the uh, the hidden, unsearchable, you know, unfathomable riches of his glory that is wrapped in what he has given to you to do. Praise the Lord. The life of God in you is more than just getting to heaven. It is also being here on earth to rot and manifest as sons of God. Hallelujah. And until the world sees the manifested sons of God, we have not explored the important and uh, the, the, the most important dimensions of the eternal life that has been given unto us. Hallelujah. God has called us to dimensions. So that we said the Lord has called us to dimension. We have become so heavenly minded that we have forgotten that we ought to. Uh, we, we have become heaven's weakest link on earth. We have become so heavenly minded that we have become uh, uh, heaven's uh, uh, weakest link on earth. You know, God placed us here to bring heaven down here. He has placed us here to be, you know, uh, the manif- uh, the, the out, the outworking of the life of heaven on earth. But you see. It's not just something we say, it's something that we have to actually experience. Hallelujah. It's good to be heavenly minded, but being heavenly minded is really to be conscious that I am the link here. I'm the strongest link of heaven on earth. Hallelujah. Say that with me. Say, I'm the strongest link of heaven on earth. Hallelujah. And so, the life of God in you, the life of God in you must well up glory to god it must well up it must well up to the next level it must well up unto salvation it was well up unto to to the walking of the effectual walking of god's power around the world he must your 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 your, your the life of god in you must well up hallelujah look at someone said there's a welling up on the inside of me 
Put your hands on your belly and say, there's a welling up taking place on the inside of me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God, somebody. Now, go with me to um, Acts chapter 2. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's a, that's a good place to start. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2. And we're going to read a few verses. Uh, this was Peter who was standing after a while, speaking in tongues for a while. He was standing in a place where, you know, the Holy Ghost began to minister through him. Praise the Lord. He had moved to the next dimension. Praise the Lord. You know, he was no more the, the, the Peter that was that that was distracted praise the lord he was now the peter that the you know in whom the holy ghost would preach and whom the holy ghost would speak glory to god hallelujah hallelujah you know <clears throat> now uh, 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 you see the, the first of all okay let, let me just go ahead and read in verse 22 let, let's let's see what he says uh, in verse 22 G, uh, peter said ye men of israel hear these words Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. <clears throat> I want you to pay attention to something here and that is in your Bible, you know, it says a man, hallelujah, a man. Pray, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. See, um, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Peter is teach preaching now, and he calls Jesus a man. He said, ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man, a dama. Last week we talked about the son of man, you know, the, 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 the term, the term, the, th the son of man really doesn't mean the son of uh, uh, um, Joseph. Because indeed, it, Joseph didn't, uh, he's, uh, he, Jesus wasn't the seed of, 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 um, of Joseph. He was a seed of a woman. And because a woman doesn't have a seed, it means that the seed was put in her by the Holy Ghost. Remember, we, we talked about the last week, Jesus uh, in Genesis, how Calvary was projected at a sin, you know, uh, in Eden, when God announced the consequences of sin to the man, the woman, and the devil, and the serpent. And uh, we, we noticed that the Bible said, God said the, the seed of a woman, you know, uh, would, 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 was, on this, was gonna come on the scene, and there was gonna be enmity between the serpent and the seed of a woman. And so Jesus, you know, is the manifest, you know, uh, seed of the woman. The Bible says, you know, he became flesh. The word uh, in John chapter 1, it says, in, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. The word word here is actually also a seed. It, it means a sperm, a sperma. And the word of God is a seed of God. The seed of God on the inside of you will impregnate you. Praise the Lord. And that was what happened to, to Mary. So the word of God came and she believed it and as a result you know she became pregnant praise the lord of the word and so jesus is the seed of the word but here peter is revealing something very powerful here that jesus as you all know him he said he is a man adama the son of man hallelujah we have told you that everything jesus did he did as a son of man not as a son of Joseph the carpenter, but as a son of Mary, who of course is a human being. He needed the human body to come to the world. And as a result of that, he is categorically the son of man. Galatians chapter 4, the Bible says, At the fullness of time, God revealed him, God brought him, and he was given birth to under the law. He went through everything we've got, they, we all went through as a natural person. You know, we all, he went through all that, praise the Lord. But you see, it was more than that. Now, he said, approved of God uh, and uh, uh, to do wonders, miracles, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know. Let's go further. Verse 23. 
him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge ye have taken foreknowledge of God ye have what taken by the wicked ends have crucified him did you see that he said him being delivered he was delivered by the foreknowledge of God in other words this is God working something out this was not Caiaphas being so politically correct that you know Herod and 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 Ty, uh, Pilate were willing to do whatever he, 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 he insinuated hallelujah this was not the devil winning hallelujah this was the foreknowledge of God on display if they had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory in other words if they knew this was going to be the way of salvation they will have understood that this was not them overcoming him this was not them punishing him this was not them you know doing all those things that they thought it was them praise the Lord you know operating as a pawn in the in the very game divine game that God was playing hallelujah and that was exactly what Peter was saying here that being delivered by the determinate counsel and for the ledge of God. Now let's go to the next verse, verse 24. He said, Whom, watch this, God has raised up, hallelujah, and having loosed the pains of the of uh, pains of death, because it was possible that he should be holding of it. For watch this, for David. This is where I'm going. It's very key that you listen to this. Listen, listen. Come on, church. It says, it says For David speaketh concerning him. Whew. It says, David speaks. You see, so Peter is about to show them a side of Jesus that David saw by prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. And that had taken place 50 days ago. That this man Jesus, something had happened to him. Praise the Lord. This man that you, you, you crucified, something happened. He gave them a glimpse of it. He said he was raised. But he's trying to let him understand that it's more than, you know, a lot of Christians, they stop at verse 24. The revelation of Jesus, that's all they see. This is the height of revelation they see. He was raised. He was raised on the third day. And thank God for that. But there's something about that. Why was he raised? For what purpose? To what end? Hallelujah. Was he raised? Let's go further. He said, for David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and that I should not be moved. Verse 26, therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Watch this. Moreover, also my flesh was, was also my flesh shall rest in hope. Verse 27, watch this. Because thou wilt not leave my soul, in hell neither wilt thou suffer than holy one to see corruption of course david saw corruption he died hallelujah and so david could not be talking about himself what peter did was he just quoted david verbatim praise the lord you know just get us to see what david said verbatim and then he brought that into that verse and he says because thou will not leave my soul so here he's referring to jesus David had sent Jesus, you know, uh, in the grave. He had sent Jesus in the, 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 the tomb of, the, of Joseph of Arimathea. He had seen him dead. Hallelujah. And he said concerning him that he would not leave his soul. His soul would not be left and his eyes would not see corruption. Hallelujah. Are you, he said, thou hast made known unto me the ways of life. The ways of life. And it says, thou shalt not make, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Hallelujah. I want you to get this before we go too far. Hallelujah. Here is the second, the, here is the first Adam. The first Adam, the, 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 the Adama. Hallelujah. The son of man hung on a tree. Hallelujah. 
and now gave up the ghost, praise the Lord, and he died. Hallelujah. But David had seen him that in his death there would be resurrection. Hallelujah. That, you know, in, in, in what was meant to be his corruption, that would be an incorruptible. Praise the Lord. And he said he, he would not see corruption. In other words, that body will not go through the deaths. He will not go through salvation. He will not go through uh, the, the death at the cross. There will be a transformation of that body. How you catch what I'm saying here? So the body that went into the grave was not the body that came out of the grave. That's why in John's Gospel, chapter 20, the Bible says that Mary wanted to touch him. He said, don't touch me. In other words, this is not a body for you to touch. Right now, you know, I've got to go to the Father first because for the first time, a new uh, body was born. A new body was born. A new body was now created. Hallelujah. And that's what Peter was telling them. That though you killed him uh, by the foreknowledge of God. The God's manifold wisdom. You killed him. You crucified him. Pra praise the Lord. But, hallelujah. He said God will raise him. Because he had already told David about him. That David. That, and what did David say? The Bible said David had seen that his body would not see corruption. His eyes would not see corruption. He would not go through the decay. Are you catching what I'm saying here? That's why you got to understand Christianity is more about the resurrection than the death. Hallelujah. People see death, but death paid the penalty for sin. Uh, and God could have just stopped there. He didn't have to resurrect because now he had no sin. He was made sin and he had been, he had been called to be a scapegoat and he has been made to be a substitute for us all. So he could just die and that's it. In the Old Testament, rather than you dying, they brought the lamb and they killed the lamb. And the, the, the person goes back home, his sins forgiven. There was an atonement of his sins, hallelujah. Because th there was a transfer, you know. And notice that animal always died. That animal always died and that is the end of the oblation. Are you catching this now? And God could have just done that. You know, he could have slain the lamb and the lamb dead eternally and we are righteous and that's it. You see, but the height of the, the, the ministry of the second Adam was to, uh, 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 was to reveal the fatherance and the depth and the next level or what you call dimensions of God. It had Adam not fallen, you would have seen this dimension. But you see, we were able to see a short part of the divine life of Adam. Are you catching what I'm saying? In the Garden of Eden. If he had lived without uh, falling, there would have been a revelation of dimensions that we couldn't see that were cut short. The Bible says, for all have seen and come short of the glory. Notice it didn't say, uh, for all have seen and uh, all the glory that we have seen is enough. He said, he said there was a coming short of the glory, uh, falling short of the glory. In other words, there was a standard of the glory that Adam fell from. There was there were steps and dimensions of glory in front of Adam, but he couldn't even he couldn't even explore all of it because of sin. So he died and he fell short of the glory of God. Hallelujah! Are you catching this now? But the second and the last Adam would pay the price of what the first Adam did, but would take it to the next level, which is the fullness. Hallelujah! of God that was ordained before the foundation of creation. God intended that the descendants of the first Adam will come into the 
fullness of God, which we saw briefly, someone said briefly, briefly before the fall. But God said, now that I am restoring, I'm calling many sons back to glory. I'm not just going to get you to, to experience the short term a uh, 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 government of uh, Adam in this realm of glory. I want you to come to the realm, the height of it, and the glory there. In Hallelujah! Come on, do you understand that? And so God's saying, "I'm bringing you." out of this grave to really show everybody what I really wanted to see in the first Adam. Are you catch what I'm saying? So I call it the Adamic dimension so you can understand what God did through the first Adam in the second Adam and what God did through this, the first Adam as I mean the second Adam dying at the cross and going into the tomb and making himself obeying the, the death at the cross. What that really means when he came out of the grave the third day for it, it was just about the penalty of sin. Uh, an eye for an eye and death you know the Bible says in the day you eat of this you shall surely die so death is the 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 way the, the wage of sin is death so if he paid the price of 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 death that's okay he didn't have to rise from the grave but he rose for a reason and David saw him David said that his eyes will not see corruption but he died he said his body will not decay, but he died. Hallelujah. Something took place in those three days. In the Something took place at the tomb. Hallelujah. He came the first time through the womb. Now he's going to be a rebirthed. A re he's going to re be rebirthed by what? By the second womb, which is the tomb. Hallelujah. The second womb through which Jesus will be born will be the tomb. Hallelujah. And there was going to be a revelation of the Son of God the way he ought to be that we had never seen before. Are you catching what I'm saying here? And so the, we have become, you see, in Genesis chapter 1 in 26, it says, God said, let's create man. Let us make man own, in, in our own likeness. Hallelujah. Image and likeness. There's nothing more to God than his image and likeness. You can't get more from him than his image and likeness. And we were created in that image and likeness. Hallelujah. So we were created. We're a people indwelt. Hallelujah. Walked in in God. Remember we said last week that the Israelite really could not have been able to express what it means to be a people of God because God could not walk in them. He could not talk in them. He could not put his laws in their hearts. Hallelujah. He was limited because of something about them and how and now but God wanted to get out of the realm of limitation. Something was limiting God. Hallelujah. And that was the body. Praise the Lord. Something was limiting God. God, and that they needed a rebirth hallelujah and so when Jesus went into the tomb he got born again Jesus got born again Jesus got born again hallelujah and the word born again here actually really means to be born from above he was born here the first time he said the first man Adam was of the earth Hallelujah. The second man is or is a quickening spirit. The last Adam is a quickening spirit. He was born at Bethlehem. He was born. People saw a baby. And they said, but now he will be born from above. Hallelujah. He will be born by the Spirit. Hallelujah. He will be born of God. I heard when the Hebrew author said, Today have I begotten you. Talking about Jesus. I have given birth to you. That's why the Bible calls him the firstborn of the begotten of the dead hallelujah and our image today and the likeness of God in us is to be conformed to the image of the one that came out of the tomb not the one that went into the tomb come on get this we are not a, an image or a likeness of the man the son of man that went into the tomb but the image and likeness of the son of God 
that was born and was there was born from the tomb hallelujah so the eternal life is more than forgiveness of sin when you gave your life to christ it was more than salvation it was god pouring all of himself into you you were being called to be a partaker of his life not just someone that would be blessed by you know some that would be saved but someone to be a partaker hallelujah the life of as God has it in himself now can come to you glory to God see that's why you got to understand we are not uh, we are the results of redemption hallelujah we, we are not the redeemed I, I, I go I, I need you to get this we are not the redeemed because the Christian you see cannot be the redeemed because the redeemed needs only one thing to be bought back hallelujah but after jesus died we we uh, we are the generation uh, th that manifests the power of redemption even though we are not the redeemed are you catching what i'm saying we, we are not the redeemed from the curse of the law hallelujah because in adam hallelujah, in the second adam we are created after the likeness and the image of the second adam praise the lord and the second adam is in the image of the son of god not the son of man i i catch what i'm saying so the son of god does not need does not need to be redeemed he, because he is redemption he is the epitome of redemption are you catching what i'm saying here and so so uh, it's a life given to us, you know, as a result of the redemption uh, that has already been established by Jesus. It's a life after redemption was already uh, delivered. Hallelujah. So we have come to a place where the word of God in us, the, the, the salvation, the life of God to us is more than just a religious Christian thing because God is giving us death. Hallelujah. The evidence of eternal life in you is not um, uh, going to church. The evidence of eternal life in you is that you have now been made in the image and likeness of the son of God. So me, I've been made. In the image and the likeness of the Son of God. And that is why the Bible says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We became gods. Hallelujah. At salvation. And so it's not so much about our salvation, getting to heaven, but so much about the authority, the image and likeness of God that is now at work in us hallelujah are you catching what i'm saying here so the first adam oh he fell he's going to need forgiveness oh that's a good one that's a good dimension but we have to rise above that dimension oh many christians go around talking about uh uh, uh um, their uh, the forgiveness of sin they go around talking about oh god has forgiven me oh they are so excited about getting to heaven all they know about is being excited about how God has forgiven them. But God did more than forgiveness of sin. When Christ went into the tomb, Peter saw him. I mean, David saw him. He said his body, his eyes will not see corruption. He's not going to go into that grave just like everybody. He's not going to go into that place like Allah and like Buddha. He's, that would not be the end. He's going to come out of that grave. A changed man. He's going to come out. The son of God. There's going to be a change. Hallelujah. There's going to be a change. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Go to 1 Corinthians. Let me show you something here. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15. Let's let's go to verse 41. Hallelujah. Can you verse 41? F 41. I'm gonna read from 41 through to let's just let's just read. 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says in verse 41, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the star for one star differed from another star in glory. Hallelujah. For one star differed from one star in glory. So the, the, the glory of the first Adam is different from the glory of the second Adam. Hallelujah. Why did I say that? Let's go to the next verse. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown in natural body. It, it, says, it is raised a spiritual body. And a nat there is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. Do you see that now? He's talking about Jesus. And he's talking about you. Because once he affects you. I mean affects Jesus. It affects you. He is the head. You are the body. And here. We use the word, the term, the body of Christ a lot. And here's where I believe one of the revelations that you need to see where the body of Christ is concerned. How that it's a spiritual body. It's not a natural body. No, we know man after the flesh. So this is not about whether you are a Greek or a Jew or a man or woman. This is a spiritual body we're talking about. Here, it says, it is sown in this honor. And that's what you saw at Calvary. The Bible says they spat on him. They stretched him wide. Hallelujah. You know, they put a thorn on his, uh, a, thorn, a, a, a thorn crown on his head. Blood gushed out of him. Isaiah saw him and said it looked like a rag on the, on the cross. Are you catching this now? But the Bible says the chastisement of that, that broader speech was laid on him. But you see, that would not be his end. That's not the end of the man. The Bible says that, you know, it is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. What does this mean? He, he, the Bible says he was made sin. That we might be what? Become, be made the righteousness of God. Not become, but be made the righteousness of God. So he made him sin. He made him sin that had no sin. That we might be made what? The righteousness of God. So that is weakness. He was made weak. Glory to God. But he was raised in power. Are you seeing this now? It was sown in corruption. Made, made sin. The Bible says. Uh, David said he would not see corruption. So what happened? Because the Bible says here. That it is sown in corruption. But David said he would not see corruption. What's going on here? Is there some, some kind of a, uh, 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 argument or debate here? No. The body that David saw, he saw a body that would not see corruption. He saw a resurrected body. David saw a resurrected body of Christ. But here Paul is talking about the resurrected, uh, the body that went into that place is not the resurrected body. It said it is sown in corruption, but it is raised. Hallelujah. So what David saw is it going to be, is that in that grave will come out what? A resurrected body for it will not see corruption. It will not go, it will not see a decay. Hallelujah. But here Paul is emphasizing the same thing, saying he went into that place, made sin. So naturally, that body, I mean supernaturally, that body experienced corruption. But another body was, bo was born. Another body was born. Hallelujah. And then in verse uh, 36, uh, 44, it said, it is sown. It is sown. A natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. You know, remember when uh, Mary... You know, went to the tomb on, on Sunday morning. The Bible says she said, where have they kept the body of my God? You see, she was 
she was not so much particular about resurrection. She just wanted his body. And that tells you something. This, this part of the scripture reveals something in John 30 that we, we probably have never seen before now. She wanted the body so that she could give that body a what? A, a, a befitting barrier. But that body cannot see corruption. So you can't bury a body that can see, oh, come on, talk to me now. You can't bury a body that cannot see corruption. But it's not the same body that went in, that came out. No. The body that went in died. The body that went in was corrupt. The body that went in is a natural, it was sown in weakness. But it was raised, hallelujah. So there is a body that was gone and there was a body that was born. That's why I said, look at your son, look at your mother. mother I, I, the next time you see me, I will not be operating in the genealogy of humanity. I will be born again. And so Jesus was the first person to be born again. Hallelujah. Jesus was the first person to be born again. Now, uh, uh, um, if you really understand this, go to uh, Romans chapter uh, 8. Uh, put your bookmark somewhere that we might come back there. Uh, Romans chapter 8. You know, I, I read uh, verse uh, 20, um, uh, 29. It said, For whom he did for now, he also predestinated, watch this, to be conformed to the image of the son that he might be what the firstborn among many brethren the firstborn among many brethren do you know that jesus was the firstborn among many brethren even as the son of man jesus had brothers he had james remember these were his brothers are you catching what I'm saying? Mary had other sons. Are you catching what I'm saying? At some point, they were telling him, hey, you, show yourself to the world. So he grew up with brothers. But you see, why is God saying the same thing here? Oh, glory to God. Why is God saying the same thing here? He's saying he's going to be the firstborn among many brethren. Hallelujah. Um, and if you go further in verse 32, he that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So here, the emphasis is about the son that was not spared and the son that was delivered up. Emphasizing the death and the resurrection of Jesus. So in verse 28, uh, verse 29, being a firstborn here is not after the order of the flesh or some, some children of Mary that, you know, Virgin Mary that the Bible is talking about. No, it's talking about you and I who have now become brothers and uh, his brothers and sisters, you know, by faith. Hallelujah. So he's saying that Jesus is going to be the firstborn. You know, in Revelation, he calls him the first begotten of the dead. Hallelujah. So, Jesus was going in there. He was the firstborn of Mary, but he was going to go to be the firstborn of God. So, he has to go in there, hallelujah, and end that reality of the firstborn in the flesh. The first Adamic dimensions. Hallelujah. He has to accomplish that realm of the first Adamic dimension and take it to the next level, which is the second Adamic dimension. Hallelujah. Come on. Are you, did you get that? So we have been called, predestinated to be conformed to the image of the first son. But the image here is not the dying Jesus. The image here is the risen Jesus. The body of Christ is not the body of the first Adam. It's the first, this body of the second Adam. The body of a quickening spirit. Not the one born in Bethlehem. We're not the firstborn of the one born in Bethlehem. We're the first one born of the one that came out of the grave. Born of the spirit. Hallelujah. Can you, can you, can you comprehend that? Hallelujah. And so 
It is very important that we understand. Now go with me to uh, John chapter 3. Let me, let me show you, let me buttress my point. Because it's important that you, you, get, you get this right. Hallelujah. John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Ooh, calaboso prieta basa. John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Let's read from verse 2. The same came, talk about Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know, you see that? We know that thou art what a teacher from God, a teacher, a rabboni from God. For no man can do these things except, you see, no man, no man. You see the emphasis of Nicodemus, no man can do this except God be with him. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, very I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What are you talking about? I mean, he just talked about how no man can do these miracles except God is with him. And Jesus takes it to the next level. He said, hey, you got to understand this thing that except a man is born again and we've told you that to be born again means to be born from above hallelujah this is you know i don't want you to 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 don't ever forget that to be born again here really is to be born from above and he says except a man be born from above he cannot see the kingdom of god in other words <laughs> except nicodemus you see a lot of people think um this is talking about the guy that wants to get saved. You know, when when you want to preach on the road and uh, you, you want to preach to someone, we're quick to go to this scripture. But there is a distortion here that a lot of people have, you know, uh, swallowed for many time, many years now. Uh, and I want to deal with it. All right. Here it was talk. It was this an emphasis. This was a direct response to Nicodemus and Nicodemus alone. This is not something you say to someone that wants to get born again. Because this doesn't make sense to the person that wants to get born again. And I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with that. Watch this. He said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, Nicodemus, except you are born again, you can't even analyze me. Here, a lot of people think it's saying, except you give your life to Christ, you can't experience the kingdom of God. No, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, except Nicodemus, except you are born again, you can't even understand who I am. In other words, this, this uh, report and analysis and description of me being a teacher, a man with many doing miracles, God is with me, is so shallow. You really cannot put a pen on who I am, except you are born from above. So you have to be born from above to be able to understand me. What does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> you got to hear this. What does that mean? It means that Jesus was saying there is a dimension that you have to be for you to understand me. You cannot understand, you cannot operate, uh, like, you know, you, you cannot be made, oh, you cannot be, you cannot be conformed to my image and my likeness if you are not born from above like me. Though here, he wasn't born yet. He hadn't been glorified. But yeah, I, I need to get this. I, I need to stay on this scripture. And I need you to understand. Until you all tell me, I understand it now. I understand it now. I'm not going to move. I, and I want to hear that you've understood it. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus was literally talking to Nicodemus. This is not a, a, a verse with, that you preach with a bell in your hand. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the Of course, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, until after he is born again, that's when he can comprehend the kingdom. 
And that's why you can come and you can now uh, analyze Jesus. Except, so there is a condition that you have to meet for you to understand the people of God. You have to be a people of God to understand the people of God. Come and talk to me. You have to understand, you have to be uh, uh, a, a people from above to understand a peep, the people from above. Are you, do you understand that? So he's, he's saying to Nicodemus, hey, uh, since you came by night and you really wanted to get something from me, I'll tell you the truth straight. Except you are born from where I come from. You are born from above. You cannot even tell. Till today, Islam still holds this reality that he was a prophet. He was a teacher. Just like every other prophet. And that's the problem with Islam. Except they are born from above. They cannot see. They cannot experience. They cannot understand the kingdom of God. They cannot understand Jesus. What uh, Nicodemus saw is what all the imams of the world today sees about Jesus. They see a teacher. They see a prophet from God. They see a man used of God. But what Jesus was telling Nicodemus is sitting in front of you is more than a teacher, a rabboni, is God himself. But Nicodemus didn't know that. And he was confused, of course, by that. Just like now, when you tell many, many Muslims that, they wonder, what are you talking about? Watch this. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born? You see, Nicodemus understood this word. He said, how can a man be born when he is old? You see, Nicodemus is describing the life of Jesus without even knowing it. Because now Jesus will be born again despite the fact that he was already an adult. He said, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter in the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Oh, whew, this is big. Can he enter? Are you seeing what Nicodemus is? Nicodemus is ah, he's describing something very prophetic but with ignorance. Because it is true that you can be you can uh, be born the second time, but not the same womb. He didn't get it. He almost got it, but he, he couldn't understand because you can't fathom this except you are born again. And he said, "Can he go into his mother's womb? No, don't say mother's womb. Can he go into the womb?" For there is such a thing as the second womb. But he didn't get it. He said, but he had an idea. What are you saying? Except a man be born from above? What does that mean? Would he enter into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 3. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say. You see, you got to pay attention when Jesus says, Verily, verily. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Except, he goes further. Watch this. Except a man be born of the water, talk about natural birth, and of the spirit, talk about spiritual birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, spirits don't need to be saved. Because the one that is born of the water is going to, be, is going to need to be saved by being born of the spirit. And spirits... Are not like that. We have a body. We are born. Uh, we are a spirit, but we have a body. Praise the Lord. And so it says, it says, except a man be born, except a man be born of natural birth and of, of spiritual birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So there is a natural birth. Where were you born? Some of you were born in the United States, you were born in London, you were born in Nigeria, born in South Africa. You were born somewhere, right? And then you are the citizen of that country. Hallelujah. 
But Jesus was saying to him that when you get born in the natural, just like he was born in the natural, Galatians chapter 4, at the fullness of time, you know, Jesus was born. Hallelujah. But you see, and he was born under the law. Praise the Lord, like every other person. He was like every other person. Hallelujah. He said, but at some point, when he was born of the Spirit, born of the Holy Ghost, he was not like every other person. That's why you are not like every other person. If you are born again, you are not like every other person. If you are born again, you are, all, you are you have been born from above. You have exchanged your citizenship. You are no more on the earth. You are no more off the earth. Hallelujah. And he says, verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. So if you are born by the first natural birth, then you have natural birth. That's who you are. Hallelujah. He said, but when you are born of the spirit, hallelujah, he said, you are spirit. You are not born of the, so you cannot be born of the flesh and operate in the realm of the spirit or vice versa. Hallelujah. So marvel not that I said unto you, must be born from above. Hallelujah. So do not marvel that I'm saying these things to you. Because it's quite a marvel to hear. It's quite amazing. It's quite uh, almost unfathomable, unthinkable that what you're talking about, that one can be born twice and you can be born the first time and be born the second time. Hallelujah. What am I trying to say with my point? Hallelujah. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that to be born again or to be born from above is uh, all of us that have been born again. We have been born again or born from above according to what Jesus said. So we are a spirit. Hallelujah. We have been born of the spirit. Therefore, we are spirit. In other words, if you go back to Romans uh, 8 and 29, to be conformed to the image of the first son. Hence, therefore, is that you are is a condition given here in chapter in verse five of John's gospel, chapter, chapter three, in verse five. In other words, for you to be conformed to that image of the firstborn is for you to be born of the Spirit. And if you are under the sound of my voice, voice, and you are born again, you are born of the Spirit. And now you have been made to be conformed to the image of Jesus, the first Son, the firstborn. The firstborn of the begotten of the dead. Hallelujah. And so Nicodemus didn't understand it. Because there was no way you'd be able to analyze Jesus if you are not in him. Or you were not born from the same place. Have you seen Americans talk together? And you see talk, uh, some of them talk to other people. You know, it's different. When an American is talking to an American, it's different. When a Nigerian is talking to a Nigerian, it's different. Hallelujah. You both can understand certain things. And Jesus is saying, except you are born from above, you cannot operate in this realm. But hallelujah, we have been born from above. And therefore, we have access to these dimensions that Jesus had access to. Glory to God. Do you understand? We have access to it. So, if you go back to our text in 2 Corinthians 3, when he talks about uh, as we be uh, beholding in the mirror the glory of God, that tells you that what we are beholding is not the glory of the first Adam. We are beholding the glory of the Lord, the one that was born at the tomb. The second Adam. That's the glory of the Lord that we see, not the glory of the first son, the firstborn of God, the, 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 the Adamic dimension. Hallelujah. So it's very key that you understand that. Now, um, uh, uh, go to 1 John. 1 John. Yes, go to 1 John. Hallelujah. Okay, before you go to 1 John, go to Luke first. Luke chapter 4. I just want to quickly establish something. Hallelujah to you. Uh, the gospel according to Luke chapter 4. Uh, uh, go straight to verse 41 if you can find it. And the devils came out and, the, and, and devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art Christ the Son of God. And rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Hallelujah. You see, this scripture baffles me because 
the revelation of Jesus as the Son of God had already been first spoken, you know, by uh, uh, even Mary, hallelujah, the, 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 the sister of uh, Lazarus, and, and Peter. Hallelujah. And Jesus never rebuked them when they said it. As a matter of fact, when Peter revealed uh, by the Spirit of the Lord that, you know, Jesus was the Son of God, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. And so they said the same thing, but how come Jesus is not, um, uh, is, is, is rebuking these devils when they said the same thing? Hallelujah. I'll tell you, it's because what they said sounded like the truth, but it's not really the truth. Hallelujah. Jesus, because Jesus did not perform these miracles as the Son of God. He actually did as a Son of Man. And if you notice, when, Jesus, when Peter confirmed and said, you are Christ, he had gotten nothing to do with miracles. He just wanted to, them to understand who he was. Hallelujah. He was not that yet, but he was going to be. He said, upon this, I will build my church. Upon this, I will build my church. And when he died... The church scattered, the temple, you know, scattered, the veil tore into two. I said, I'm going to build it in three days. So he said, I will build my church and the gates, the authority of hell shall not be, shall not prevail against it. What does that mean? There's something about being a son of God, you know, the image of the son of God at work in you. He was not yet the son of God before death. But after he came out of the grave, he became the son of God. Because now at the tomb, a body was given to him. A body that Mary could, should not touch. And a body that could walk through the wall. A body that is now what we call the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The body of Christ is a spiritual body. It's a spiritual body. Hallelujah. And so... We are now sons of God. The Bible says he has brought many sons back to glory. But as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So we are not going to be like the second Adam. We are already like the second Adam. Why? Because we have been made to be conformed to the image of the first son. How? By being born from above. How? By giving our hearts to Jesus, our life, uh, confessing him as Lord and Savior. We became a people born from above, just like him. So if you have seen me, you have seen him. So the glories of the second Adam has been laid up, heaped up for the many sons that will come into the glory. For his brethren, hallelujah. He has brought many sons back to glory. So God, what that means is that the glory of God is upon me because the nature of God is upon me as it was with Christ. That's why he made both to say greater works than this. And some people go, oh, really? Are we ever going to do a miracle or works that could be ever greater than Jesus's? Yes. Why? Because he only had 50 days after he, he was raised. He only lived in that realm physically with us for just 50 days. And that's why Luke reported in chapter 1. He said he, he, uh, he, he was with them for 40 days. And he said he was with them, teaching them about the kingdom of God. What was he teaching again? He had taught them the kingdom for three years for three and a half years what what on earth was he teaching them he said with many infallible proofs he was with them the treatise of things that jesus did go to the, uh, uh, the book of acts let's just uh, read it because again this series i'm going somewhere and, and i want some of you to just have some footings before we jump Hallelujah. We, we are still on the floor right now. We haven't on the ground. We haven't, uh, uh, we're not airborne yet. Hallelujah. Uh, where does she go to Acts? Uh, go to Luke's book of Acts. And then in verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, the former tragedies have I made, O Theophilus, of all, the, all that Jerusalem began to do and teach. Jesus rather began to do and teach began to do if it's your Bible you want to underline that he began to do certain things and teach certain things after resurrection 
He began to do them and teach them. Why is he doing and teaching them? He's doing what he's teaching. He needed to do it because he had never done such before. Not on that dimension. (laughs) He had never. They've watched him do stuff before. But he began to do certain things here. The Bible didn't record it. But he said he began to do it. I, be, I believe the Bible didn't record it because it will be revealed in your spirit. And you begin to operate in it. It's not something. It, it's, it's, it's a deeper dimension of God that only is revealed. Because why does he tell us about what Jesus began to do and teach? And he never told us. Rather, he said until, until the day which we were. Which, until the day, which means 40 days. Hallelujah. The day he left, 40 days in which, you see, it was 40 days, you know, they they met at Sinai, you know, 40 days after they left Egypt, 40 days after he came out of the grave, you know, the Bible says, until the day in which he was taken up, until ascension, after that, after that, after that, he, what, after that, he, through the Holy Ghost, watch this, had given commandments unto the apostles, whose, whom, he had chosen. Did you see that? Again, the Bible didn't tell us about these commandments. See, there are many things hidden in this verse 1 and 2 and 3 that a lot of people miss. Are you got what I'm saying? After resurrection, the things he began to do, the things he began to do and to teach. Where, where are those things? Where are those things that Jesus began to do and teach? The Bible didn't record it. They didn't tell us about it. So there were dimensions of teachings of Jesus, of deeds, works of Jesus that the Bible really could, did not report. And emphatically, they were the post-resurrection dimensions. They were post-resurrection dimension of life, of is the calling of God upon his life. Look at what it says. It says, uh, after that he had, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom, they had, whom he had chosen. So there were commandments given. We don't know. Verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after his death, by many infallible proofs. Did you see that? Many infallible proofs many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god remember when he said except a man be born from above he cannot see the kingdom of god here again he said he began to teach them he began to do things he began to give commandment he began to uh 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 uh, uh, show himself alive by many 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 hallelujah infallible proofs being seen of them for 40 days and speaking also the things the things pertaining to the kingdom of god So, the post-resurrection ministry of Jesus was not something that people could see and read about. Because he had just 40 days to do many things. And in those 40 days, the Bible says, there were things he did, there were things he taught, there were commandments he gave, and he said, there were in many infallible proofs that were seen, and the Bible says there were things that he began to uh, 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 speak concerning the kingdom of God. I believe these things are dimensions higher than what he had done before. Before he went into that tomb, he had taught many things, he had done many things, he had given many commandments. Hallelujah! He had many infallible uh, uh, proofs. And he taught and spake many things about the kingdom of God. But why is he saying it here again? He began to say, he says this thing here because he wanted to emphasize the God of dimensions. He wanted to emphasize that there is something about being born from above. And being born from above that, you know, you got to be able to operate in this realm. So I put it to you, church, watch this. There are things that needs to be done. Calaboro Societe. In the dimension of you as a son of God that we haven't seen yet. There are things that need to be taught. 
that we haven't been teaching that we haven't heard before. There are commandments and infallible, many infallible proofs that the church has not been able to manifest. Hallelujah. Because this revelation has been scarce. Hallelujah. Come on, do you understand this? Do you understand this? Do you, do you understand? Because I, I needed to come to a, a, a place of a, a, a divine understanding. Watch this. So our fellowship with God henceforth is a fellowship of post-resurrection realities. Our fellowship with God ascends towards the post-resurrection realities. Come and talk to me, church. Our attitude, our deeds manifest or proclaims the power of the spiritual body, not the one sown in corruption. The second Adam. It's talking about the glory of the second Adam. Hallelujah. That's why it says, greater works than this shall you do. That's why it says, the greater one lives on the inside of you. Greater is he that, that is in you than he that is in the world. The world is the earthy realm. I say, said, but the one on the inside of you said is greater. Hallelujah. That's why the Holy Spirit is called the what? the earnest, the earnest guarantee, the the deposit. Because there was there is more to what he is about to do in your life than you have seen today. There's more to what the Holy Spirit want to see, want to do in your life than what you have seen today. I love the way Paul posts it. He said, growing into him in all things. Hallelujah. Growing into him in all things. Hallelujah. First John. I, I told you to go to First John. Go to First John. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, are you, are you, did you get something? Say, I'm growing into him. In all things. Say that with me. Say, I'm growing into him in all things. I'm going growing into him in all things. Hallelujah. All right, first John chapter uh, three. I said you should go to. Hallelujah. First John three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John 3, what does it say in verse 1? Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the word knoweth, knoweth, uh, the word knoweth us not because it knew him not. Ooh, did you see that? You know, I was telling you that Nicodemus was saying stuff. But Jesus was saying, you would not be able to analyze me if you are not born from, if you are not from the country I come from, you can't analyze me. And John, after many years, after many years, after ascension, began to write. And he's saying something the same way, the same thing. Say, oh, what manner of love. Oh, no wonder the Ephesians where we read talked about we understanding the love of God grounded in love. When you are grounded in love, it does not just mean you have love towards your neighbor and you love your enemies. It actually ultimately means to be grounded in love is for you to understand what that love did to you in the first place that that love made you a son of resurrection a son of god Woo! that's why you can love your neighbor that's why you can do some things hallelujah because you are now like him you are now operating in the likeness of his resurrection i am all secretly at a basso 
Oh, yeah, ba 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 sate. He said, Be oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. We have been called the sons of God. God has called us sons. Hallelujah. It says, therefore, the world knoweth us not. Why? This does not mean the world would know us like, you know, they know us on Facebook and they call us pastors. In fact, if that's the knowledge the Bible is talking about, no, that's not the knowledge the Bible is talking about because the world really knows us. They know where our church is. They know the name of our pastor. They know that the, they hear the, the music of our past, uh, uh, the soundtracks of our uh, uh, me, me, worship leaders. They know the, the songs. Hallelujah. They know us. Hallelujah. But there is a knowing glory to God that they have not come into. There is a, a knowing of the sons of God that the world doesn't know yet. Hallelujah. There is a knowledge about the church that the world doesn't know yet. Hallelujah. And that's why God is. And that knowledge is not in the realm that we are right now. It's in the realm of the second Adamic dimension. It's in the realm of infallible proofs. It's in the realm of the things that happens when you are born from above. I'm talking about the consciousness of this welling up on the inside of you. That I am not from here. I am from above. I said we have unction from the Holy One above. We do not only have unction from the Holy One above, we are seated with the Holy One above. And we can do all things. We know all things. abides in you that you need no man to teach you. You get to the point where you are like Christ. You know what you what He knows. You're operating in His the knowledge that He operates in, in the grace that you are. He said, He said, of the fullness of His grace. We have received grace, heaped upon grace, heaped upon grace, heaped upon grace. So when we read the word, he said, when we behold, as beholding in the mirror, the word of God, he said, we behold the, the glory of the Lord. We behold the glory of Jesus, the son that was born in the tomb. The glory of Jesus, not the one born at Bethlehem, the one born in the tomb. He said, we are operating in, the, in his likeness and in, in his image so that who ever sees me has seen him hallelujah he said no longer do i call you servant for a servant cannot understand the thing his master is doing but i call you friends in other words we're friends with him we're on the same level he tells us what's going on we know what is good what he's thinking we know how he thinks and we begin to do things together on the same level Oof. Call the sons of God, therefore the word knoweth also because they knew him not. They didn't, they didn't know him. They didn't know him. They called him son of Adama. They called him the son of man. They knew him to be a miracle walker. They knew him to be, but he was more than that. There was a dimension that nobody could tell. Nobody saw in him. Hallelujah. But those dimensions are written in the word for us to know. Infallible realms, uh, the infallible proof realms, the infallible proof dimension, the things it began to teach, hallelujah, and to do glory to God, pertaining to the kingdom, the things he began to show them, he began to teach them for 40 days. What more could he be teaching them? That is the dimension that God is calling his church to. There is a, a post-resurrection dimension that the church must begin to operate in. In this dimension, we're not glad to be born again. We're not a people excited about being born again. We're not a people just excited that, oh, we are born again. Oh, thank God we're going to heaven. That is not the emphasis in this realm. Hallelujah. In this realm, the emphasis is that we are friends with Jesus. We are associates of divinity. We are like him. We have shared. We have walked. We have uh, partaken of who he is. Hallelujah. And we are now operating in a stead, hallelujah. We can do greater works, hallelujah, than what we saw, hallelujah. Because he had just 40 days to show those things. But now we have just, we have just uh, a, a few, uh, we have how many years, hallelujah. Come on church, when last, when did you give your heart to Jesus? You have more than 40 days, hallelujah. He had just, for, just 40 days and there were, we saw many infallible proofs, glory to God. Hallelujah. But we have more than that. When did you give your heart to Jesus? 
When did Jesus become the Lord of your heart? The Lord of your life. Hallelujah. From that moment on, you, oper- you, you switched into a new dimension. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You switched into a new dimension. And guess what it says here in verse 2. He said, I have a soul. He said, behold. Somebody shout behold. He said, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Woo. Glory to God. Woo, this is big. This is big. Come on, church. Come on, Alba Nation. This is big. This is big. Look at what it said. It said, Behold, beloved, now. So it's not now. We're not going to be. We are now the sons of God. Again, remember that the, the emphasis of the son here is in, is in relation to post resurrection dimension. Hallelujah. Not the first Adamic dimension. The second Adam, the, the quickening spirit dimension. Hallelujah. Somebody That's where we are. Now, it says, but now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Hallelujah. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know. Come on, is that in your Bible? We know. What, what, is, what is John talking about? We know. Why do we know? Because we already know now that we are like him. I'm not going to find out that I'm like Jesus. <laughs> you know, some people are still waiting to, to get a body at rapture so they can look like Jesus. Now are you the sons of God, say the spirit of grace. Now are you the Christ to your generations. Hallelujah. See, at rapture, you have come to the end of the first assignment of your life. So it's not at rapture that we are changed. Yes, at rapture, we are given another body so that we can fit in to uh, the heaven. Because this cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Are you catching what I'm saying here? But you see, in the realm of the spirit, we are already like him. We are already exactly like him. The church is the carbon copy of the resurrected Christ. We are already like him. You see, at the marriage of the Lamb, Jesus is not going to give us um, extra anointing to do anything. When we come back here at the millennial reign, it's not going to give us extra anointing. No, he's not going to do that. Because the Holy Spirit is the, is the deposit, the anest, the arabon, the deposit, the pledge that I will give you this now and then I will come give you the other one later. Is the anest deposit in you. When God gave you the Holy Spirit, he deposited in you something that will ultimately be uh, finished in eternity. But he has already deposited it in you. He's already at work in you. We're not going to be like Jesus simply because we're going to be given another body. In the realm of the spirit, hallelujah, we are already that body. We are already that spiritual body. Not the natural. The natural body cannot be here. But in the realm of the spirit, we are already that spiritual body. We're already that spiritual body. But because he went with bones and, you know, all those things, you know, uh, phys- his uh, anatomy, he went physically. We are going to need a body to overshadow or to take over our body for us to be able to enter into heaven. Because this cannot go in there. That's the need for that. God is not changing 
our body at rapture so that we can operate in a greater realm of the anointing. No, he is changing it because it's because uh, we cannot operate. Uh, we cannot. Uh, uh, he's giving us a new body so that we can come. We can have access to the sphere called the kingdom of heaven, a geographical place. It is more, that is more or less the ticket that is needed for you to actually enter into heaven. Are you catching what I'm saying? But we are not given that body to increase our anointing or to increase anything. We are given that body so we can penetrate a physical, geographical place called heaven. It doesn't increase our anointing. You know why? Because we are already like him. The Bible says that we know. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. When he shall appear, we're not going to see him and go, oh my God. Uh, uh, no, he said, because in the spirit, we're already like him. The Bible says, as he is in heaven. As he is in heaven. As he is now in heaven. So are we here on earth. Why did he say that? If Giving us a body at rapture is what is eventually going to. No, no. I said we are groaning in our spirit so that we could actually have a change. We are groaning. We are groaning. Our spirit is groaning. Hallelujah. Look at this. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. But don't forget, I think a lot of people are mistaken. Uh, they, 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 they take this, we shall be like him. You know, and all of that. They, they take it, uh, they, they read it with forgetting what was said before it. What did he say before it? He said, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. He said, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, but we know. It does not appear what we shall be like, at rapture when he comes, but we know in our Noah that we're already like him because when he comes, we shall be like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you see that? Did you, did you, did you get something from there? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we, we have been called to operate in the anointing. Hallelujah. Of the son of God. Hallelujah. And what is this anointing? We, we showed you a scripture in, uh, uh, this would be my last scripture. Hallelujah. Uh, go, go to Hebrew in chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews in chapter 6. Uh, I, I want to I read something to you. Hallelujah. This kind of ushers us into the next level. Uh, it ushers us into the next level. Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 6. Uh, read with me from verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of the Lord and the past of the world to come. Hallelujah. Now I know that, you know, the author is emphasis here really is about those who have fallen away and, um, you know, uh, and, uh, 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 uh uh, talking about uh, it's like a command for the the uh, the, uh, uh, the the apostas the apostas uh, apostasy and uh, what Christ, the counsel that is needed you know uh, in the midst of uh, 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 apostate uh, Christianity or the end of the world as she might have uh, known it but uh, there is also a sublimal message that the Spirit of the Lord you know, uh, open my eyes to see. It says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. So uh, to have tasted of uh, uh, the heavenly gift and be enlightened uh, and all of that is to be a partaker of the Holy Ghost, a partaker of the Holy Ghost. So if I am partaking of the Holy Ghost, meaning if I'm born again, born from above, you know, it says I am a partaker of the Holy Ghost. It said I have tasted of what? The good word. Hallelujah. And of the powers of the of the word to come. Are you got what I'm saying? So he said they have tasted of the good word. 
Hallelujah. So um, uh, when the Holy Ghost is, is at work in your life, when you are uh, uh, when you are uh, uh, indwelt by the Spirit of God, you know, certain things will happen to you. The Bible says you have already tasted, you know, remember the, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit a deposit, you know, a, a guarantee, you know, of what is to come. Hallelujah. That, that's what the Bible calls them. And so uh, it says you have tasted of the heavenly gift. So the Holy Spirit gives us a taste, hallelujah, of the heavenly gifts. Praise the Lord. You know, so uh, I believe the realms of uh, the second Adamic dimension, the post-resurrection operating as sons of the of resurrection is, is going to be that there will be a manifestation, you know, of heavenly gift. Praise the Lord. At work, hallelujah. There will be a, 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 an increase, glory to God, you know, in the work. Uh, in the gift of the spirit hallelujah you know uh, there will be an increase in the giving and in exercising of, of, of the of the gift of the spirit i'm going to say that again there will be an increase in the giving you know and the exercising of spiritual gifts or heavenly gifts you know there's going to be such a move of god in this in this last day there's going to be such a move of god in this next level this next dimension that the gift uh, the heavenly the gift gifts of the Holy Ghost, the gifts of Jesus, the gift of the Father, all these gifts of heaven, you know, will be will be so uh it will be activated you know uh, on another level praise the lord you know it's going to be seen there will be dimensions of that gift that you've never seen before you know you're going to give word of knowledge the way you've never seen it before wisdom interpretation of tongues diverse tongues faith you know uh, uh, uh discerning of spirit you're going to it's going to be so so uh it's going to be on a whole nother level hallelujah in other words if you're praying the gift of the spirit right now God is saying there are dimensions to it that I want to take you to. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord in you, you know, has brought you to a place where you can maybe have operate in the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, you know, prophecy, faith, you know, and all of that. But you know, gift of faith, I mean, you know, but God is saying there are dimensions to that gift. There are dimensions to it. So don't stay out of the realm of, yeah, I know I can. I know I can. No, you, you want to go farther. I know you can interpret tongues, but God wants to take that gift to the next level. There's a next dimension to why. Because the same Holy Ghost, you know, is one at work. Hallelujah. And it's giving you what? The taste, hallelujah, of the next level right now. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. It says, and the taste of a good word. Hallelujah. And again, God, what's going to happen in this day and this age, in this season? We're going into the dimension of the word. Hallelujah. And in a new dimension of the word, the new dimension of the spirit. All right. When there is a new dimension of the word, realize that there's going to be automatically a new dimension of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith comes. Hallelujah. And it's going to be a, a, a new dimension of powers because the Bible says, and a taste of the powers of the world to come. Hallelujah. I'm not talking the world to come. I'm talking about the world to come. I'm talking about the next world, the next millennia reign. All right. And last week we talked about what are the things that happens in the, in the world to come. Hallelujah. You will notice, Bible said, there would there will no longer be sickness, no symptoms, no hunger, light, no darkness. All right, no one will say, "I am sick." Hallelujah. That means you can operate in that realm right now. But if you say, if if, if somebody is going to say, "I'm not sick," that means there's going to be a a walker of the miracle. So what God is saying, the walker of the miracle, move to the next level. Leave this mountain. Go to the next higher mountain in that anointing. Hallelujah. So you are able to heal at the at the dimension where nobody in the city is what is. See, there was a pastor, Alan Allen, who said nobody in his church will die. And for a long time, he had so many old people, hundred and something, a lot of them that didn't die. And until God told him, you already placed them on a dimension. They won't die if you don't allow them to die. And he told them, he said, if you want to die, you can come talk to me. And people literally go back to him and say, I think I'm, I, I would rather go now. People literally had to, you see, these are tastes. This is not Bible days. This is the days some, just some years ago. And that power is still at work. And that power is at work effectually, effectively in you. It's an effectual working power. And it's at work in you. 
Don't ever make the mistake that is at work with so No, no, you are anointed. Hallelujah. And so there's going to be uh, a, a, a God is staring, a prophetic ascendancy, a prophetic dimension. A, God, God is staring a prophetic dimension in what? In the Evelyn gifts. Is staring a, 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 another dimension in what? The word and power. Hallelujah. The word meaning faith also and power. So God is saying, your faith is going to rise. Your faith has got to rise to this dimension of post-resurrection reality and begin to walk in them. You thought you're speaking, you're speaking tongues. God said, you got to go farther. You, you thought this is it for you. You, you, are, you are a leader in church. You, you, you operate in one gift or two gifts of the Holy Ghost. Or you are called in one office or two offices of the ministry gift or this and that. You see, it was saying, it's saying you got to rise and move to the next level. The next level is now. Hallelujah. You can't stay there. I'm, I'm an HOD. I'm a, you can't stay there. Rise to the next level. Search. And you will see there's a next level right in front of you. God said, these are the days that people would experience the taste of the powers of the world to come. I feel like I said that was my last scripture, but I, I, I'm going to have to show you one more scripture just for you to uh, get something right. Uh, I'll go to uh, Matthew in chapter 10. Hallelujah. Matthew, Matthew chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 it's very key that you get this. In verse 1, I want us to read together if you have it. I want you to also read together. The Bible says, uh, that is Matthew chapter 10 in verse 1. It said, And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, watch this, he gave them power. Stop there. He gave them power. He didn't say he gave them faith. He didn't say he gave them glory. He said he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast out to cast them out and to heal all manner of diseases and all manner of uh, all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Did you see that? Does that sound to you like the age to come? Because the Bible records about the age to come that no one shall say, I am sick. For no one to say, I am sick, it means that um, all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease, including financial disease, all manner, not all, no longer will cancer be a thing among Christians. No longer. Did you see that? So he said, they will heal all manner of diseases, of sicknesses, and all manner of diseases. But watch, what, watch this. It gave them power. It gave them power. Power is different from faith. He said, but ye shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, he didn't say, but you shall receive faith. There's a difference between faith and power. And there's such a thing as operating in the power, not just in faith. Many Christians operate in the realm of faith to get results. But there is such a thing as operating in the realm of power to get results. I, I don't know if you understand that. Do you, do you understand? You know, most people are operating in the realm of power, in, in the realm of in, in the realm of faith. Hallelujah! But there's a realm of power where you determine what faith can or cannot do. Do you understand? You discern what faith can 
and cannot do. So don't tell me my faith can't do certain things. Hallelujah. Don't tell me my faith can't make some things happen. Don't tell me my faith can't. Why? Because I've got power. Hallelujah. So let me say I got power. Say I've got power. I've got power. You know, in the, in the, in the realm, the, the, the children of Israel were given laws so they can operate in the life. Hallelujah. No, we were given life so that we can determine laws. The life of God is in you so that you can determine laws. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, somebody. All we are trying to say in this message to you is that the power of resurrection is at work in you. And Jesus didn't express all. He didn't have time to express all that the second birth really should be about. And the powers of being born from above. He only had 40 days. But we are the sons of God. We have been made and conformed to the image of the Son of God. And now we can operate as he would have done and as he did in those 40 days. It's high time the church began to focus on those 40 days more than the three and a half years that led to the cross. I'm going to say that again. It's high time that the church of Jesus began to focus on the last 40 days of Jesus not the last uh, the, not the days before his death the church must come to that place where she embraces the post-resurrection era post-resurrection dimension hallelujah you catching this if you didn't hear me the first and the second time, I'm going to say it again. God is calling his church. And I am convinced that the church should be functioning in the last 40 days of Jesus on earth. More than functioning in the last three and a half years that led him to the cross for the resurrection of Jesus is the last paint the last picture and the highest dimension that God intends for his church to be conformed to hallelujah and God is calling you to move higher in the realms of the anointing move higher from the gift that you used to operate in so open your mouth wherever you are with me. Speak in tongues and begin to say, Lord, I am increased. I am increased in my gift. I am increased in the word. I am increased in the powers. I begin to make power available. I begin to speak and decree and increase a magnifying of the gift of God upon your life. Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift. To stir it up is not just to make it active. It is also to determine to which extent it, it, its influence will be. The stirring of the gift of God in you is an emphasis of the influence that it is designed to have. And like God has said, the anointing is in you but to flow through you. It is flowing to you but to, to be at work through you. Come on somebody. Open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, I want to operate in a higher dimension of this gift or that gift or that office or this realm. Hallelujah. Some of you go, I dreamt, I dream a lot, but you can take it to the next level. 
Some people go, I, I, I love to study the word of God. You can, you can be a teacher on a higher dimension. Uh, I love to, uh, I'm, a, I'm a pastor. You can pastor on a higher dimension. I am a teacher. You can teach. I'm an apostle. You can do what God has called you. The places he has sent you. The message he has given to you. You can do it on a higher dimension. Come on church. Open your mouth and begin to pray. And say I am operating from the higher dimension. Hallelujah. I am operating in the higher dimension of your word. Like never before. In the name of Jesus. Malebo suke bariasta. Ligrado so sekeyababashe. Oh, rande bosso to la babasha. Hele mo rondo so te bahia. Oh, come on, somebody, don't limit the Holy One on the inside of you. Begin to operate in the power of God, in the, in the grace of God that you've never operated before. Come on, somebody. La bosso so kaya basha. Elamandra siata baka la basa. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Ele mo so kalabasha. Elamondo so kalababasha. Elamanda karabasa. Ile da koso. Le madarabosha. Le manoso poroso. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord is expanding. Is expanding you from within. I hear virtues. I can hear the growth of spiritual virtues growing on the inside of you. I can see, I can hear, literally, I can hear this move like a baby moving in the womb, like a bone stretched. Like like the, the weights increased, hallelujah, laboroso, that we may come to the breadth, the length, the height, hallelujah, to know the love of God, hallelujah. That's what the scriptures that we read said in Ephesians chapter 3, hallelujah. And that is happening right now. Ephesians 3 is happening right now in your spirit. Ephesians 3 is happening right now. There is an increase in the length. You are able to comprehend now because you are growing. Also, I see an increase. The virtues, the, the virtue uh, in the realm of spirit, your, your, your calling, your virtue are, are like your organs. And God saying uh, uh, that organ is growing. Hallelujah, it's growing. The Lord is bringing some of you to a, a place of frustration when it comes to where you are in your prayer life because it's pushing you out of your comfort zone. The Lord is saying, I, I want you to come out of that. Stop praying like that. Stop it. Stop talking like that. Stop preaching like that. You, you bigger than that. You can go farther than where you are. Come on, receive those words. Receive those Yeah. It becomes my highest place. Just to know you more. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Woo. The Lord is placing passions on, on your heart. Yeah. Yeah. He's placing passions on your heart. The Lord is showing some of you places. He's showing you places. Yeah. He's showing you places that you need to. He's showing you people. And places that you need to influence there's, there's someone here since we started somebody has been coming to your heart a set of people have been coming to your heart it's because God has given you those people it's time for you to put action to it hallelujah the anointing works when there is a divine practicality on the side of the one that received it the recipient of the anointing you will never experience the glory of the anointing if all you see all you do is hear what he says and believe it and not do something about it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I see capacities in the realm of the Spirit being increased. Strength being given. Hallelujah. For the race. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for God is supplying right now. 
uh, like it was with Elisha, the ravens. He's it, supply, it supplying right now to you. He's supplying to you right now. He's supplying to you right now. Eat it, eat it. You know, eat it. Eat this anointing. Drink this anointing. The journey in front of you is great. But God wants a better prophet to come out of this. Hallelujah. God wants a better prophet to come out of this pandemic. A be better pastor. A better church is coming out. Hallelujah. We're coming into the realm of, 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 of increase. Like we've never seen it in the church. Because the grace of God upon God's people is about to be seen like never before. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, for dimensions. Dimensions. Oh, there are dimensions in your spirit. There are dimensions in your spirit. That dimension in your spirit. Only let it well it up. Only, only let it well up on the inside of you. When you practice God's presence, hey, yeah, they'll just say, I, 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 am, I am born from God, of God. I am born from above. Hallelujah. I, I, as He is in heaven, so am I. And wherever I go, the kingdom of God is established. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I see somebody, you know, God, God is calling you. And there's this gift that is about to be seen in your, in your ministry like never. And that's a gift of faith. And that's a gift of faith. The gift of faith, the gift of working on miracles is, is about to be made manifest in your life like never before. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The spirit of counsel is resting upon certain people right here. The Lord is giving you divine instruction for people, for nations, for families. He's giving you divine instruction. The Lord, you will speak and they will listen. You, you speak and you bring healing to them because it's a work in you like never before thank you lord and i see another person you know a man a woman actually watching me you have a you use a you use a a, a, a medical uh, uh, recommended uh, glass uh, corrective glass you know the lord is healing you right now the lord is healing you as a matter of fact you said if god will heal you of this uh, uh, eye problem you that's the sign that you know the lord was calling you to something big and you're going to go and you're going to give your heart to him and i'm speaking to you right now that the lord is healing you right now he's healing you the lord the anointing is correcting your eyes hello also the, the anointing is correcting you see the, the anointing of god is a corrective uh, presence and is correcting because it's a creative presence as well it's correcting your eyes it's correcting come on somebody lift up your hands receive that there's a the anointing is at, at work right now as a corrective and creative uh, uh, experience creative power at work right now it, it is creating and correcting things it's creating and correcting things in the name of jesus oh thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus i see a, a woman a, 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 there's someone uh, i think is your mom she's slim and her left leg is paralyzed more or less that she can't walk with it she leans with it there's a healing anointing that's flowing right now through that leg and, and i see her standing up she feels this this sudden sensation and she's going to stand up and begin to operate in the anointing and in, in miracle she's going to walk and she's going to walk and i said i uh, hear three days she's going to walk perfectly she's going to run you know in three days you know the, the leg is going to get better and better in three days she'll walk perfect in the name of jesus thank you lord thank you lord malo sovra de ata oh lembra ba ku sovra ere meshulo zovra nando brosute elemanos jala egredoso pra alianos made of ronda supplier de voje legra anamoso i hear new chapters new chapters the lord is bringing many into new chapters new chapters of relationship new chapters of the anointing new chapters of me in ministry new chapters at workplace el amor rosuli in the jolomoro no kusubre de aliandos neromoso tsusi etikali in the thank you lord jesus thank you father thank you lord the lord is is, is releasing a, a a a divine speed on petitions hallelujah divine speed on petitions petitions are going to be answered faster than you thought they will happen thank you lord jesus come and say i receive that in jesus name 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's someone you have a, 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 a um, an head injury. You have an end injury. On, I, I just saw through your your skull on the inside, and I saw a reddish uh, thing, uh, blood, and it's on your right hand. Yeah, because you are facing me with your your, your right hand. It's on your right hand, and you, you usually just feel this crazy migraine every now and then. The Lord is healing you of that migraine right now. You are healed of that migraine in the name of Jesus. I command that migraine be gone, you spirit of infirmity. You have no right to be there in the name of Jesus. Yes, you can feel that 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 ease, that uh, that that uh, uh, mentor-like feeling around your skull right now. That's the healing power of the anointing. It's taking place right now. You're getting healed. You're getting healed. You're getting healed. Malo sovre elbra no sovre den no I speak against every forms of um, uh, uh, belly pain or uh, aches, I, 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 every ache, every categories of ache, I speak against you and I, re I decree in the name of Jesus, the peace of God to be released in the bodies of uh, everyone on that side of my voice, in the name of Jesus, the peace of God reigning in your body, in your vein, in your blood, in your in every part of your body, in the name of Jesus. Malo Rosso, Praligron Zuvra de Kaba Agilanda Sia, Pradico Zuvra de Sia La Mandavo. There is a migration taking place. There is a migration taking place. Malo Rosso Zuvra de Asenashta. God is taking some of you to another place. I see some people traveling through the waters to another place. And that talks about nations or countries. And, and God is sending you out. God is giving you a vision. God is giving you a vision to, to do major things, to, to win souls, to, to build, hallelujah, an ark of Noah in, in cities. Yes, the Lord is calling you. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes, the Lord is calling you. I see you traveling on, on, on a cano, and that could be a plane. That could be anything, but you're moving over the waters. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mel Bradoso, Brady and Celiate. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of shyness and timidity. Come out in the name of Jesus. You have limited this once for a while. And today your reign is over. For he has not given the spirit of fear but of love, power and a sound mind. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Alabosso, boldness comes. Boldness cometh to you. Boldness cometh to you. Be bold, saith the Lord. Be bold to rise as lions. Be bold to rise and operate as a lion. For I have given you the land. I have given you the territory. And no one, no situation, no one, no situation shall be said to be greater than you. For the greater one is at work in you. Say the Spirit of Grace. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We glorify. Oh, yala bosoto yala rabash. Eh, yala bosonda yala rabash. Ye yala rosonda yala rabash. Oh. I breathe new dimensions in your prayer life, in your prayer meetings, in your prayer places. And more also that you'll experience God on a higher place, in higher grounds. Oh, ya la la bosso, ye. Ya la bosso, na le ya la bosso. Ye ya la bosso, na ya la. Rona rosso. Ye ya la bosso, ne ya la cosa. Ma dio lo su ya la she. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the latter rain. Thank you, Lord, for the latter rain. Let her in, let her in, let her in. Let her rain upon every seed of the ground. Let her rain, let her rain of the anointing. Oh, ya la la bosso, ya la sho. Oh, no so na ya la la bosso. Uro no so da ya la rosha na ya la bosso. 
Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Did you get something today? Hallelujah. You're ready to go out with that dimension mentality. You're ready to go out as sons of righteousness, sons of resurrection. Hallelujah. Go out to operating higher realms of the anointing in your life. Hallelujah. I am proud of what God is going to do, set to do in your life. And I'm so expected. Hallelujah. And with that, I want to say, you know, make sure you are conscious of these things. Um, if you, if, make sure you are available uh, uh, to read the Word of God, to practice God's presence. I'm going to be talking about that next week, you know, and how to tap into these dimensions consciously. Hallelujah. And um, one thing I notice is the Lord requires your cooperation to do whatever. As it was with Mary, God wants to manifest it. Jesus through you. But he needs you to do it. He needs you to be part of the team. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. I look forward to greater testimonies in the month of uh, June. You know, it's going to be a lot of praying, a lot of opportunity for a welling up, a springing up. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying a lot and, and information will go out as soon as possible. You know, but I sense a, a spirit of prayer enveloping the church. Hallelujah. And I want us to respond to it. Be the first church to respond to it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord, we, Lord, we give you praise and we thank you for this awesome grace, gracious moment in your word. Thank you, Lord, for what eyes have not seen. You have revealed to us what ears have not heard. You have revealed our spirit. We thank you because you blessed us today. We're empowered. We're empowered by your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we are praying. The church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Until we come your way again next week, Sunday, stay blessed and stay welling up unto the eternal life. Thank you. I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. is going to be the evidence to the world so i'm living christ that's why paul said put on christ put on the resurrected christ that's why paul said we didn't preach the dying jesus to you we preach the crucified and risen jesus to you because that is the message that bears the resurrection power and that is what it means to be a witness god has given birth to a generation that is without sin and that was the generation Jesus came to model and that's why he came as a son of man. We know that there is a lifting up. We always go with God on this, praise the Lord. When all the generation crying unto the Lord, begging God to try to do something, we are the generation commanding the will of God. When all the generation trying to bring things into perfection, we are the generation creating perfection. That we are the generation fathered by the Holy Ghost. We are the generation procreated by the Spirit of God. And He is in us to minister glory to the earth. And no matter how small we are in faith, no matter how low we are in our lives right now, the glory of God is in us to bring us to the place that the Father has prepared for us. Hallelujah.